Okay, we are live. Uh, welcome to the show, Steve Park. Always good to have Steve here. Uh, usually the first one to arrive on the show. We had a very uh, fun-filled, uh, profitable, engaging uh, live stream last night on the patrons. And the patrons is very small, intimate kind of affair, but we had up to 26 people at one time tuning in just on the Patreon show. So that was kind of interesting. It was a little different. Normally we average, what, around 14 to 17 people. So we'd have uh, 24 people in there, just Patreons. Uh, that was really good, man. I really enjoyed it. Sue's there with me. So if you like Susie, <laughs> Squeezies goes. Uh, it is Good Friday. Um, this is the, uh, the day that uh, Christ was crucified. For our iniquities, for our sins, uh, you know, um, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. So it's a big deal. Yeah. Good Pasche. Thank you, Ivan. Ivan was there with us last night. Chuck T, welcome. Happy Good Friday. This is people, you know, now... I think they have a different date over in the Orthodox world. They they do it. Their Easter is a little different time wise, but uh, they both uh, recognize the uh, same sacrifice. The great, uh, you know, you've got the division of uh, Catholicism, the Roman world, and then Byzantium, uh, the Orthodox world. Uh, so there's a big schism back in the uh, 1300s that uh, caused some problems. What David, we just started. <laughs> but yeah, later I'm gonna bug everybody. Once we get a few people in, we're gonna we're gonna pester people. Do you wanna come on TV show today? I don't know what your mood is. If you want to come up, we haven't seen you for like months, but you're always welcome here, David. Whatever you like. It's up to you. Um yeah, okay, so that happened predictably. Oh yeah, yeah, this is not gonna be good. I'm playing chess and I've I'm lost. Uh, I'm going to lose. I think two games in a row. I've just been on a winning streak of seven games. I kind of I blew a, a move there and it kind of ruined ruined it. Um, and of course, Easter Sunday is the uh, resurrection. So therein lies the gospel uh, for the uh, Christ, the propitiation for our sins. Uh, David's on the road, heading out of town. Okay, well, uh, traveling mercies for you. Have a great uh, trip wherever it carries you, and it'll, it'll be really good. It's a long Friday. Losing a chess, you know what that was. Yeah, I'm never happy. I, I don't like losing, but you have to acknowledge your, uh, you know, you don't always uh, make the right moves, and sometimes you're up against simply up against a better player, and there's lots of players better than me. But, you know, I do okay. I win more than I lose. So I guess at the end of the day, I should go home happy, you know. But such is, uh, such is the drama, such is the life. Uh, Sue listened to her trio album, uh, Bill Evans and Company. She loved it. And uh, she talked about it on the show last night. That was a gift to us and really a gift to Sue, uh, direct from our friend Mark. Who used to be the uh, the rediscovering the Beatles channel? Then he wanted to broaden it and not limit himself just to Beatles, which is probably a good idea because he's looking to collect a lot of stuff in his own collection and make that happen. Uh, I was telling you, I think a week ago or so, there is a guitar store directly across the street from me uh, that I want to go visit and make things happen. Uh, good Pasque. Uh, Ivan from Arne. Arne, I'm so sorry you came up during one of these uh, crazy shows where we had some controversy that had to be shuffled out. Uh, you're welcome to come up anytime you want, and we can talk about uh, you know your journey in music and what you like, and uh, you know what uh, what record collecting means to you. Because you know a lot of people uh, we, we have this uh, passionate hobby. So many people are there. And I've been listening to my Beatles CDs as well. I like compact discs. And I've been working through a couple of uh, Beatles CDs. The lovely Michelle joins us. Welcome, Michelle. Good to see you here. Stay, Stephen, always nice to see you. 
Uh, Billie Eilish is now upset with artists and vinyl variants. Vinyl variants. Well, there's always been vinyl variants on one level or the other, you know, and it's like they did this in comic books with alternate covers, comic book covers. It became a thing in the 90s uh, where there were just too many uh, divergent covers of a single issue. Oh, I got to get this one, this one. And it kind of inflated the industry and made it uh, problematic. One Night in Bangkok, San Francesco is very good by Murray Head. Yeah, it was a big, it was catchy. One Night in Bangkok and the world's your oyster. Yeah, I remember that. I wonder what my audio is doing. Sometimes it defaults to my camera. I've got a, a Yeti Nano here with Massey on it. I love Massey. I have the Beatles mono box set. Oh, Arnie, that is very nice to have. I've got it too. I, I I do have it, but mine is, um, what I want to say about mine, mine's not in the box. Like I had to go get, collect them over a couple of years. It took me two years, but I've got the entire series of those albums now. Uh, thanks to people like uh, Jason Rojas and George Borden and um, God, a, a Chill Pint, I think I bought. Uh, a couple off of him over in Vancouver had Sergeant Pepper Mono original uh, as well. But anyway, people help me out, and uh, and uh, I'm so grateful to them all. Uh, that's really good. Bobby Fisher versus Magnus Carlson. They're both great. Wake me up after your Beatles talk. I will. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. It's Good Friday. Uh, welcome to Silly Correct. Absolutely correct. This is a comedy show. If you haven't figured that out, you know, we'd like to have a laugh here, hopefully. Uh, where, wherever you lay on the uh, spectrum, the so-called spectrum, that uh, this uh, show uh, brings some degree of amusement to you. I like promoting in, independent artists here as well. We've got First Boy on the Moon, David Pedroja. That's an incredible album. Please consider uh, purchasing that album. Supporting this guy is great. It is poppy rock, man. It's pop rock and fine. Uh, Seven Horse, Joey Kelly over there. And, of course, Angelo Kelly's uh, Childhood 45 there. But, you know, Angelo's uh, a performing uh, musician. Very, very good, boy, I tell you. Uh, my mom and my sister, I played a bunch of Angelo stuff because there's a lot of concerts of Angelo with his family, both him as a kid with his older brothers and sisters and his dad, but also when he's uh, on his own with his own little uh, group of kids. And they are, aren't they the cutest things, his kids? Oh, they're adorable. They're, they're like, they're, they're really cute. They're gorgeous. Yes. They're very good genes, is good what you say. No, good genes. Very, Talk a producer. Children. All right. Well, let me check the audio on this, make sure it's coming through the right means. Microphone Yeti Nano. That's what I want to see. All right. Uh, careful talking about the spectrum. Well, we have to talk about it. You have to mention it. Yeah, uh, it's important. Uh, my legal, my lawyer, my team, my legal team tells me it's okay uh, to mention that. It's it's just fine and dandy. But uh, yeah, it's Good Friday. So is now you Catholic kids, this means usually that there's a midnight mass for you to attend. A am I right about that? And then uh, just you Baptists, I think, are just going out in the morning, usually around 11 o'clock or something, and uh, or 10 maybe. And you get out there uh, to church and like, uh, so that's interesting. Oh, 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 I didn't sleep so much this night. I was watching Sarah's show with Pumping Vinyl and George Borden. So George Borden has discovered Sarah, and now George has joined forces with Sarah. <laughs> wow. Yes. Well, I think that's fantastic. George is a good guy. We're all eggy and colorful. Yeah, this is the uh, the Ukrainian uh, tradition of the painting of the eggs, Easter eggs. We have a place in uh, Alberta, Canada, the province of Alberta. Uh, the little town is called Vagerville, Vagerville, and it prides itself on uh, having the world's largest Easter egg, very large Ukrainian population in Vagerville. So that's kind of something. Uh, in terms of uh, new music, I've got my friend John Dagon and Luann, his uh, better half, coming over to Vancouver Island on Saturday. That's tomorrow. So after the show tomorrow, we're going to run out to the uh, boat, the ferry, and pick these kids up, and we're going to go around and have some adventures. I think we'll have a lot of fun. 
Uh, first boy on the moon, there's a seven inch uh, single on Bandcamp called Sophia. Pick it up, check it out. Uh, support independent artists. No midnight mass for us. We have Easter vigil on Saturday. It used to go on for hours, but no one has the attention span for it now. Yeah, isn't that something, huh? Good Friday, Rod. Um, yes, good Friday. Good morning, Rachel, Sue, and all the gang in here. Happy Good Friday for those that observe the uh, the occasion. It's not really a holiday as such, you know. Uh, although it is when you think of holy day, holy day, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, without... Uh, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So that's the whole idea about it, that Christ is the uh, fulfillment of the, the the culmination of the blood of rams and goats and the like uh, that the Jewish uh, people had during the, the Old Testament period, days of the temple and uh, the Levitical priesthood and the like, and then uh, Christ coming in, the personification of all that, the culmination of it, the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. So it's not a, it is a holy day. It is a holy day, but it's not a, ha a happy one. It, although we, we, we recognize our sin at this time, you better recognize your sin if you're a Christian. I certainly recognize mine. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, oh, and then we got uh, Jens Ivandor de Gladplast. Okay, well, I, I could not agree more. Christ is king. Yes, king king of the Jews. They wrote that sign above him on the cross when he was crucified. Christ, here, here, you know, here lies the king of the Jews. Um, do Christians actually hope to see Christ rise from the dead asking for, for a friend? No, we don't hope to see Christ rise from the dead. Christ is risen. So uh, the thing we say is on Easter Sunday, right on the third day, he rose from the dead because death could not contain him. That's the beauty of it. Life conquered death. That's the resurrection, life out of death. And that's good news. That's the gospel. Behold, I bring you great tidings. Tidings of great joy. And, uh, and then he comes back to take care of business at the end of days. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, in the book of Revelation, the return of Christ is amazing. It's an amazing thing. And the kings of the earth uh, cover themselves. They cry out for the rocks to cover them. For he doesn't come as the sacrificial lamb that we celebrate at Easter, uh, but as the uh, king of justice, the prince of peace, the Lord of lords, the king of kings, the Lord of hosts. Amazing. Uh, we have Stations of the Cross today to kick it all off. No meat today, sufficient chips for tea. Yeah, you see, now I'm not Catholic. I am uh, I should have been by all accounts. Uh, my birth mother was Irish and French Catholic, right? Her, her thing. But she was not a follower of it. But that was her cultural tradition, all her relatives and everything, right? A lot of them are buried out at the Catholic cemetery. A lot of my aunts and uncles and stuff. You can read all about it in the Trump Bible. i got to get one of them Trump Bibles. Uh, he should come and deal with the Antichrist. I'll tell you one thing, Norman he Masloff. Uh, uh, he will deal with the Antichrist. Uh, and if you're thinking Donald Trump is the Antichrist, no. You'd be wrong about that. Uh, for our spirit bears with our spirit that we are, in fact, the children of God. My God is beautiful. Folks, one of the great things uh, in my collection, probably a, the, a, a crown of my collection, is the often vilified Queen box set. I want to talk about this absolutely gorgeous piece of merchandise. And I want to thank Michael 45, uh, the wonderful Michael 45, for bringing this to my attention. Uh, yeah, the King James Bible is my favorite version for myself. It's the language of it, so is absolutely beautiful in the King James Bible. This is Queen, okay? Great band. Roger Deacon, Freddie Murray. Fred, uh, we got uh, Brian May, right? And uh, Roger Taylor on drums. But th these guys are great. Look how many albums you get with this thing, man. Look how many albums you get. Uh, they're all colored vinyl. It comes in beautiful colored vinyl. And 
I cannot encourage if this is available anywhere, and I'm not sure it is anymore, but these boxes are worthwhile. Here's why. If you're not able to go out and, and over the period of time, maybe you're older, elderly, elderly, and you don't have time to go out and hunt each of these down and then look for them in minty condition, because these are coming to you in tip-top shape. They're beautiful uh, condition. All the packaging's there for, that was included with the originals. So, uh, And it comes with this beautiful book. And so box sets such as the Queen box set, the Beatles in mono, the Beatles stereo, these are really solid investments for you. Uh, in my opinion, they don't lose their value. Uh, it's the return of the Queen box. And as a, no, it's we're not doing MoFi. I'm just telling you about a really solid package. And I'm telling you, this thing weighs a ton. comes with a slip cover, you know, so you got to slip your cover off, right? And boy, oh boy, it's on there. But it comes out. It is a nice box set. That's my point. That's my whole point, that it's a beautiful box set. And uh, boy, oh boy, is that on? You got to really, there's a real technique. You got to kind of shake it and push it. But uh, some people get disposed of this one to reveal the gold underneath. You see that? Anyway, I'm not going to play with it. Uh, but the point is, is that there's a gorgeous book in here as well. And it's got the Queen entire discography when Freddie was with them, which is what you want. And one bonus uh, record album where he's not there. Are you auctioning? No, I never get rid of it. That's my point. It's a solid. It's what Johnny says. It's a nice box set. It's really value for dollar, in my opinion. I'll see if it's available. Queen box set. And I'll just say buy. Queen uh, box set by, and it's vinyl. Queen vinyl. I'm just curious what it's going for, if it's available. Um, I would hope it would be still. Okay, yeah, see, it's gone up. Uh, $1,266 uh, for this, for the big one, over at rarevinyl.com. Um, yeah, Queen Vinyl set 1,296 on Amazon. So it's uh, it's gone up since uh, I bought it, uh, gone up, uh, doubled in price. So that's really good. Uh, a nice set. It goes Queen the Studio Collection 180 gram vinyl for sale on eBay. <laughs> and uh, okay. You can buy it now. Here's one going for six hundred dollars uh, on eBay. So you can get it for six hundred plus sixty four uh, in tax shipping from the U.S. That's reasonable. That I would do that. And he's a top rated seller too. But otherwise, you're getting you're paying a lot more. One thousand one hundred, one thousand three hundred. Here's one going for six hundred seventy six. But the shipping is 182. I hope they would adjust that. So it, you know, it's it ranges in price, but uh, it is available on eBay. You can check it out. But the prices do range. But it's uh, it's gone up over when it first came out. That's for sure. Anyway, okay, interesting. So you can check that. I have some of the Queen albums on CD. Yeah, well, there the Queen is a great band, and. Uh, Johnny, got one. Yeah, these are it's they're absolutely fantastic. And the packaging is top tier, top tier. Uh the the big one it really is still. Now, here's another thing with these box sets, because you get these beautiful books. When I went and got my uh, Beatles in Mono individually recorded, recorded individual records, uh it did not include the book. Well, my friend Frank at Mr. Sticker Mania has mailed one out to me, along with a poster for Emotional Rescue. I've got a Canadian first press of Emotional Rescue. Originally, they came with a poster. Frank had an extra poster. He said, Rach, you, you promote my channel. You help me out. I'm going to send you one. So I'm getting a poster, and I'm getting the book that goes with the 2014 Beatles um mono box set so all i need now is to find a 
And it does happen. Like sometimes stores will have a, a mono box that just floating around. Well, there's no records in it. We got the box for display. Can we uh, chat about today's Beatles related release? Well, I haven't heard about it. Let's find out what's going on. Massey may have some news off the press for us. Um, they may have said to finish, never stop laughing. Anyone else see concert buddy? Johnny L showing up on Collect Co. made me spill my drink. Start to finish, never stop laughing. Uh oh, that's that bodes ill for me. If you're getting the laughs on somebody else's channel, this is uh, this could be the end of the ghost, I'm telling you right there. <laughs> but uh, speaking of the beginning of all things, it's uh, our favorite Catholic, lapsed Catholic, St. Masloff. Welcome to the show, Massey. There's the big guy right there. Massey, you'd be about 12 or so when that was Look, there. look. John is bigger than Jesus. <laughs> Holy shit, he's right. You can't argue facts. That's the science. It's settled. Actual size. Yes. I'm you look nice. good. I'm you look good the there, buddy. I want to get in the middle here somehow. All right. There you are. Um, I respect. I just, I, you know, I actually like Jesus as an iconic figure. I love, and yes. as a, as a human. I, I, well, what's not to like? He's a nice Jewish yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. Like good, good. I mean, how many Jews do you know are good carpenters, right? He's I mean, a good many, carpenter. Not yes. many. We have to hire people to do renovation. He could do it himself. Oh, so, um, <laughs> there's a release today. Yes. I heard last night the record in its entirety and i okay. actually love it and what i think it? it's going to be controversial for some uh -oh. it's the new beyonce cowboy record okay and i heard about this he does i think this the second track is a cover of blackbird uh -oh. and she uses the paul mccartney guitar track from the white album Okay, so yeah, this is what they can do with technology. Well, so I mean, she's, she has to get permission, but she, it, she yeah, but it's karaoke essentially. You know, with the real guy. Well, no, it's it's a little thing. Is it's very faithful because they it's very faithful yeah. to the original. I usually like when artists because she's got to get her rhythm with it. Yeah, yeah, but okay. it's good. It's really good. I liked it. Yeah. I mean, it's you know, Beatle purists are gonna heads are gonna explode, but you know, I kind I like you know, it. Uh, it's, I just treat it as a cover. Even if Paul's yeah, a company, yeah, and it's, it and it's, part a of a, it's part of a larger album, on a, a country album. I, I think it's a pretty good I've album. I've heard about it, yeah. yeah. Uh, no. um, what's the cover of the album look like? Let's go. Uh, she's, on a, she's on a horse. Well, I, ha I haven't seen it in person. Yeah, isn't she like on, half naked on a horse? She's on a horse. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's yeah, kind of yeah. like the, um, uh, what's the, um, what's the gay cowboy who wears the mask? Um, uh, that is uh, or, uh, Orville Peck. Peck. Orville, Orville Peck. Peck. To me, that was one of my favorite albums of two years ago, that Orville Peck album, Bronco, yeah. uh, Bronco or whatever the one it was called. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, Beyonce is an interesting fairy. First of all, she's my cousin. Uh, Carter, it's Cowboy Carter is, I guess, what she's called it. And, you know, yeah, Carbo, that's it, Cowboy Carter. You know, it's great, too, because I always like, yeah. Wow. I mean, we can talk about the Beatles. I was kidding about not talking about the Beatles, but yeah. there's this is going to introduce a new audience to people who ha haven't really listened to the Beatles. And there are a lot of people out there who don't know this music. Okay, well, there's a few. There's Cowboy Carter, and then there's Beyonce Renaissance. No, it's Cowboy Carter. That's oh, okay, because the Renaissance album's got a picture of her. You know, like John Carter from Mars? Yes, yes. Okay, Cowboy Carter. Well, let me look up Cowboy Anyway, Carter. I liked it, Zach. I liked it. I mean, it's it's not a, a reworking. It's very faithful because it's it's so funny when you hear the beginning and you hear that guitar. You easily know that's the White Album. That's the real deal. Yeah. 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 And I'm sure McCartney loves it. I said, well, why wouldn't he? Right. Uh, okay. Here. Oh wow. I like the cover. Cowboy Carter and uh, beautiful white horse like Sue's. Looks kind of like oh wow, it almost looks like a painting or an airbrush or something's gone over. Yeah, I haven't seen it in person. I'm gonna I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna probably pick it up today. The uh, all right. version. Yeah, let me uh, let me show the kids what we're talking about. Yeah, uh, just in terms of. I mean, her one of my favorite albums of the last decade is Lemonade. Her album Lemonade is is real. Yeah, good. here is this is the. Uh, the album you got an American flag. I think that's an American flag. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But you don't see the uh, stars. Someone's going to be upset that they cropped out the flag. Someone's some conspiracy theorist is going to say, "Oh, well, they kind I of." Would, 
Well, hold on. I wouldn't call it conspiracy. I just think it would be more a case of, uh, Why? you know, like, I just don't. Yeah, share this like, tab. I want to share the big one. That's beautiful. That's Yeah, I don't think anybody should. That's you know, not safe, though, writing, writing in reverse. I, You know, you need a seatbelt if you're going to do that. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering if she's really on. But the I don't know. Let's ask Sue, because Sue is a horse expert. I'm not a horse expert. Is that that doesn't look safe to me, Sue? No, she's not really. Like <laughs> she's not really on the horse. It's a deal. Well, right? Can someone do uh, one of those uh, recreations and put Sue's face on that uh, on Beyonce? Uh, does she cover Chuck Berry on the album? I was binging Chuck Berry concerts last night. It really was the full package. Oh, we've lost Lou Gossett. Lou Gossett Jr. is gone. Yeah, I didn't want to to mention that because I get a reputation. Yeah, you get. We have people say you're going to do a a, a thing. Uh, is Beyonce tied in the pedo ring? I don't think so. I hope not. I don't she think so. Yeah, no, she's with Diddy? another one. No, no she's with. She uh, she's with um, um another rapper. Oh yeah. No. Jay Z. Yeah, no, She's with Jay Z. Jay Z's yeah. great. Jay Z's a good guy. He's not one of the tweakers. He's a good guy. Yeah. Um, but there uh, are some country albums who aren't playing the record. The Grim Razzlov. There's a Grim Reaper, but there's a Grim uh, Razzlov. Anyway, there's the uh, cover of the new album. Apparently, looks good. And I don't think you know, like. Holy smoke! I don't think I'd call it conspiracy. It would just be like I'm just being, I'm just giving you shit. I'll tell kidding. you what they could do though. Uh, there is some sort of extra meaning. Oh yeah, hold on. I gotta put my my tin foil. Oh, I thought you were praying. There. No, there's uh, there's uh, what should we call it? <laughs> what do they call that? The uh, You're such like, a shit ass, Rachel. Yes. If they put trim on the flag, it means apparently it means something. Trim, yeah, the trim on the American flag. Like sometimes you'll see the flag with I mean, gold trim on it. I'm not sure there's a meaning for it. If anybody knows what that means, oh, uh, yeah, Rachel, you favorite? know, uh, I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna someday, like hopefully yeah. in a long time, I'm gonna be at my deathbed uh -oh. and I'm gonna find out that uh -oh. um, you've been doing the cold bear, uh. Cobert right. plan playing game. Years. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty relaxed about everything. I try to be anyway. Uh, Beyonce, 16 tracks of country. Sorry, this is not good. Too much swearing in it, says Yvonne. Yvonne said, uh, that's really? swearing. You're what? upset about someone swearing on a record? I'm yeah, sorry. but I mean, sometimes it's unnecessary. Sometimes you want to have a more peaceful. Fuck, it's answer. always necessary. Really? You think? Fuck yeah. Wow. <laughs> Stuff went down today. He's in a fight. Yeah. He's in a fighting mood. You're struggling. I'm here. For, I'm here for Good Friday. It's a good All Friday. Right. All right. Now, Massey. So uh, Beyonce new album is today the first day of release of this thing. Well, I, it's been streaming. I had, yeah. you know, I but I heard the whole thing last night, and I actually I liked it for for, for a first listen. You know, David. Wow. When do you start feeling uh, better to the point where we can get you on the camera again and talk to you? Because uh, I, I love David's stories. He's a real warrior from the rock and roll period. I mean, he's lived the life. He's got like Joey, right? And Angelo and all these guys that uh, do it for a living, the tour. The Man, tour. did you see Joey? They added a shitload more uh, dates. Uh, it's it's going to be, be he is going to be so freaking good. You know, like, yeah, you Joey, know, right? I hope you're watching. I don't know if you're up yet, but congratulations. You got a lot I, of dates. You I know? doubt if he's up. So data tour is expanding. Maybe I should, you should hire me as your road manager, except I don't know how to do no. that. <laughs> Everything would be really good. Over up here, there. over there. Get up, wake up. We got to catch a bus. Oh, come I on. Do that. It would be like hard day's night. What was it? Steak and his friend. I could be you know? Norm. I could be on. Norm. <laughs> you remember those two guys in hard day's night? And then the one day were always, you know, Norm. at, at One of them together. was Norm. And what was Norman the Shake? Norman, Norman Shake. 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 Yeah. But I'm going to be Norm. Okay. I'll be Shake. And we'll yeah. go out and have some trouble. Um, okay. Who ordered the half decaf latte with an extra shot of uh, Carmel? He's a mixer. You want to watch him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I can do that. I can totally do that. Wake up. Get out of bed. No, Lizette. 
Wake up, get out of bed, drag the um, code across your head. We didn't want the croissants with chocolate inside. We only wanted the raspberry ones in the in the green room. Okay, Mazzy, you were a name drop last night. Leland, are, what, are we talking about the Sarah Tomato live stream experience? I wasn't on Sarah's stream. No, but your name was dropped over there. What was that? What are you talking about? I'm not sure. Uh, Mazzy, any know. regrets from the Collectco invasion? What's Collectco? You know, okay. Uh, well, the, teach me Collectco. You okay. got to teach me. Mia culpa. Uh, we probably went, but we, we didn't start bidding and doing fake bids and stuff. It's a weird thing. We were talking about in the conversation on chances. This guy he seems like he's on all the time. It's kind of like if, if you had a record guy selling records 24 seven, I'm yeah. just not. And it's like, remember QVC, the show where they'd say, we got a beautiful diamond. We got 300 copies of this time. You never see the guy. He always puts these records and people are bidding. Records that are like $20 records are going for 70 Where was that? Coletco? Who is this guy? Where is he's this, this guy? He's guy in the South. I think he's, is he in Alabama or, or Kentucky? I don't know where he is. Down there is somewhere. he in our community? Is he one of us? No, it's, but he's just, but he fucking, what a great business model. He makes a shitload. So we're watch. We, we put it on the screen to watch it on the live stream. We weren't, doing yeah. anything and all of a sudden johnny who was not on our stream johnny l makes some comment on it and so a couple of i went on and said hi chance that's all i wrote i just wrote hi chance yeah and uh b sides uh apparently was on it and she mentioned oh these are the vinyl community uh, uh guys doing a piss or whatever i'm i'm paraphrasing yeah. um but we weren't bidding on the stuff um you know yeah, we. I guess we did act a little bit of a mic, uh, like a um, motorcycle gang, maybe. Oh, you drove in and started pushing them, the kid. The but it was. Um, it's amazing. The what a great business model because you know, to his credit, I guess there's a lot of people out there that don't aren't near record stores and don't know it. But these, I mean, what some of the records were going for. I mean, okay. So did you go to this guy's channel or was he on Chance's show? Well, or? He was live while it turns out while Chance was live, so Chance brought the stream up. So we oh, were, I brought we're it on his thing, yeah. But then, then all of a sudden, people who weren't on our stream, like Johnny L, commented on, and Chance saw Johnny L's name, yeah. and then um, I wrote "Hi Chance," and I went in and just commented "Hi Chance." That was my uh, my thing. So okay, so Chance is running a live stream. And watch party. They found that was they had. Oh yeah, that's what she said. Uh, B side said YouTube vinyl community ding dongs. She referred to us as okay, so that's you no know, uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Well, she yeah, she didn't like me. I know that, but I'm okay with her. I you know, she just kind of puts her nose and plays fine with her. her yeah. below. Uh I said hello to Mazzy on Coletco last night, remembering Mazzy. Remember Mazzy DJ Marino. I didn't I didn't see uh, that because it was hard to read when you're watching it. So anyway, so Coletco, are they just about records or do they do it? It's all records. I mean, you don't see the guy. He's literally has a like an end bin and, and the records are on top and he's talking so fast. I got two copies yeah. of this. It's like an auctioneer in a way. Yeah. And they do these auctions and some of these prices and we were cracking up for the prices. Oh my God. You know, and some of it's nothing really rare. I mean, just seal copies, new, some used. Yeah. Um, uh, Leland says he's worried about William. Are you worried about William Massey? No, I'm not worried about him. I mean, I, you know, I mean, it's funny when he did, I don't know if, uh, oh, I yeah. heard that his, um, I got to watch it, I guess, but the mall oh, thing he did, rock he star sleeping. He quoted me. Oh, you're Joey. Okay. Rock star sleeping. So I can say this. Joey's time to get up. We got to get the bus. We're going into Cleveland tomorrow. I can do that. Uh, the guy auctions coins and posters, apparently. Oh, I didn't know that. Analog I've only needs. seen his record stuff. Analog needs one? Yeah, he's a real boy. He's a real boy. Person. Hang on uh, there, friend. Don't time this kid out. Oh, yeah. Wait. No, I mean, I'm not. I, I think he does a good thing. You know, it's just surprising what people pay for just, you know. I guess they would say what we're paying on our, on our auctions, but I don't think we get that much. Yeah, Johnny L said, I said, Chance, I'm a huge fan. I said, I love you, Mazzy. So we didn't say anything bad to Coletco. Yeah, it is Coletco. That's the name of the the stream. You're hired for the roadie position or as the uh, manager, touring manager. Mr. Callio, would you like uh, uh, 
a, a decaf or a half calf, or would you like a soy? I can do that. Uh, PB Thel apparently went in. He bought a record last night. Oh, okay. So there you go. Kathy, in your vast collection of records, what do you think is the most overhyped, over kind of a box set? Like I get in shit for my queen, so I want to talk about it because I like it. And so is there a box set that you get sh stain over, but you go, no, this is actually a legit thing. It's a good thing. Um, I like it. I'm sticking. You know, I probably have a couple that are not considered great sounding. I, yeah. I know Patrick, if he's watching, would say I have the Doors box set that came out about 15 years ago, 12 years ago. The Doors box set. All right. And I should probably get rid of it because I have other versions of it. That's one I would get rid of. And it's it's okay. It's not as bad as, I mean, but again, I mentioned, oh, I did a Led Zeppelin video yesterday. And um, I think that those expanded Jimmy Page Led Zeppelin albums are not bad. And oh actually, no, they're okay. They're okay. Yeah. And in fact, even PB Thug says they're they're like in the third third place for him, uh, trailing behind Robert Ludwig originals so, and first yeah. pressings. Like, yeah. but they're third on like they're they're solid. And if you're they're not AB, um, you probably wouldn't know the difference. Yeah, Maybe. I got I got the whole set. I think the only one I'm lacking from the 2016, 2015, 2014, I think they came out was. Um, is Coda. I don't have that, but I got presents and physical graffiti. The only copy I have of physical gra graffiti is that reissue yeah, I'm uh, from 20. And I'm happy with it. It's a great sounding. It's got a lot of, it's, it's a, they did a great job. I have no worries about it. At well, all. you know I what it, originally, but now I'm good. You know what I applauded in that video? I, uh, how, what a great archive series. And I, I did compare it. I hate to mention this, but to the Beatles, uh, re, masters or remixes right because all, they're all different sizes it's like facoctus shit they did there you know right i gotta give you a shout out now, folks if you don't know you're under a rock somewhere massey has done a led zeppelin he's finally done his quote obligatory led zeppelin video he calls it <laughs> right and uh you can see that he's dealing with the deluxe expanded edition because you can see the covers are that inverted uh photographic kind of negative you know with the color on it Anyway, and that's um, what they like should have done, on. and that's what they should have done, or something like that, with the Beatles remasters or remixes. Change the cover so you know it's not the original yeah. mix. So okay, cool. yeah. easily identify. Speaking of Led Zeppelin, this looks like uh, the Hindenburg or something. There, Christopher, the analog uh, brain writes that uh, the Coca Cola Company has a reputation of being spot on grading vinyl. He claims it's meant. It's going to be. Some collectors are okay paying a premium price. Yeah, that's fair. Then. What you're that's, getting from the guy. That's fair. That's a good response. Well, yeah. And also, I guess the guy has done his homework. So, uh, you know, if you can get consistent with your grading, which is the hardest thing to do to get down, that's where most of the disappointment comes. They called this mint. It's crackly and that's not mint. That's crap. Uh, Coletco Records looks good. Uh, See, we got we just brought him a new audience, a few new members. Massey, yes, Massey has done that, but I'll let Massey talk about the you know, zombies I, box set. I don't know if I did a specific video. I did include. I have an autograph box. I have it's the entire band who's alive. Uh, what six years ago, eight years yeah. ago when it came out. Uh, it, I got it autographed the day after they won. They got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I like the zombies. The zombies are, they had a good, uh, good long run. And then, of course, Argent, Dave Argent, whatever, Ron Argent, what, Rod Argent. He ends up going with uh, Hold Your Head Up, which was a good song. Hold your woman, head up. Hold high. your head up. Woman, hold your head up. Bum, 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 bum. You know, it's a good little song. It rocks along. And the vocal, the vocalist, what's his name uh, for the zombies? That guy, uh, he's got uh, a strange uh, name. I was going to say Taylor Swift. Um, no, it's not. It's a. It's, a it's um. Come, someone's going to. It's too early. Uh, come on, everybody. It's early for us old people. Who's the guy? Blum, Colin. Colin Blunstone. Blunstone. Yeah. 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 A great vocal. That guy. He's got a unique vocal and it perfect 
Perfect fit for that band. You know, his solo album that was reissued a few years ago, I got a copy of it. It's so good. It it didn't do much when it came out. It's really good. Uh, Time and Season is such a classic. I love that song. Uh, it was funny, back in the early 70s, I went looking for that record at a, a store that no longer exists. Long, It's a long gone record store. I went in with Rudy. I go, I'm looking for a song by the zombies. She goes, which one? I go, I don't know. How many hits can a group called the zombies have? And, uh, I, you know, the irony is that, that actually they did pretty good. They they had a couple. But Can you, uh, can you explain to me, because yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a religious uh guy in yeah. Christianity. Just a jealous What's the guy. difference? I know they're told different things, so excuse my na naivete. Naivete, yes. What's the difference between, okay, well, Good Friday, I understand what that is, and then there's the thing where they have that little smudge on their head, Ash Wednesday. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's that about? I don't know. I'm not Catholic. Oh, okay. it's a It's a Catholic thing. They have, like, the Catholics have it all worked out, you know? Okay. Uh, so, I, I'm, I'm not. I don't observe that, so that's not out of my oh, tradition. Okay. Protestant, pro, you know, evangelical kind of thing. But uh, Susie, we're going. We're putting our best gal on it. Susie's going to research it. Ash Wednesday. Yeah. Ash Wednesday. We're going to find I out what it is. Necessarily Catholic. Well, okay. Talk to me about it. it Ash Wednesday is the first day of Lent. That's Catholic. That's Catholic. We don't. Okay. Are you? Are oh? Are you observing Lent? No. What, is that when you is that when you borrow? No, like that's like, a uh, like uh, Susie lent me her jazz box. Yeah, look at this. See, Eric they knows have something like that in our. Uh... The Lent Lent. is like it's like uh, you know where you fast and you can eat certain foods you can't eat. Oh, I can't. I, I'm a, you know I can't eat that. Uh, you know I'm saving that up for Lent. And what does it signify? What does it represent? Why? Wh what? Yeah, see, we were Anglican. Girl. I was Anglican. Yeah. Well, not really, but that's a church of mine, too. They, yeah. they observed Lent. Yeah. Catholics, Lutherans. Hold up, but you don't, if you're Anglican, there's two types of Anglicans, though. There's low Anglican and high Anglican. It gets really complex. We were high Anglican. Yeah, my dad was high Anglican. We're, we're hoity -toity. Yeah, hoity-toity. So was my dad. Okay. But. Uh, Baptist, Methodist, Nazarene. Uh, Sarah is like a ringmaster. I got off the screen when the real men turned up. Ha ha ha. David was there for a bit. I can't handle Whenever I switch and I have some of those bro guys talking about shit, I just can't handle it. It's not mine. It's a whole different rule for me. Okay. What's going on here? She keeps. That's uh, like, it's harmless, fun, except for butts to butts. Oh, yeah. Butts. It's there. Uh, he got more eyeballs than no one spiked bids. Harmless, fun. like the guy from being in the people in for this collect go guy. Um, uh, <laughs> don't even get him going. He's in a fighting mood today, Wolfie. Don't I'm not in a fighting mood. No, 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 no. What did he say? I, I can't. Oh, see it'll it. get your. It'll get your. Dad wait, wait. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, right. Mazzy, same time before Jesus was. Some time before Jesus was. Tried and corrupt by a crooked DA. Okay, Judge, he made a triumphal entry in the great. Okay. God, okay. I corrupt this. Yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't see the evidence. I didn't see the evidence there. So it was, and the thing is with Jesus, the problem with Jesus stuff, it was all hearsay. They said he was the son of God. That's what you say. I have Jesus Christ Superstar. I know it. So he got a, Jesus definitely got a raw deal, you know. Um, so I, I agree with you, Wolfie, about that. That was a corrupt system, a corrupt government there. You know. Uh, hey, we love Ian. Ian can do whatever Ian wants. We love Ian here. That's fine. I respect Usually what he's doing, Herc, is Ian just has a pre-recorded uh, thing that he launches. You know, unless he's interviewing somebody, you know. But generally, you know, I'm not worried about it. And also different crowd. A lot of the Ian people, you know, they don't like my show or me or whatever. And uh, so it's going to be a different thing. I'm not missing out on anything if he does. But I think it's just a pre-recorded uh, premiere. You know, they call you can pre premiere a video to go. Madsy does this a lot with his videos. Frequently, they, they're set to go. At, just as this ends, 
nine o'clock mass he launches usually i usually i schedule them for 9 a.m i don't have one yeah. coming up today but i usually schedule yeah. them for night i have to take it off because it's good friday today so i don't have a video today uh yeah yeah there was some there were problems there were problems well you know yeah but actually that's what's happening to trump his own people are turned have turned against him you know well i don't i i would argue that they aren't his people i would argue i'm his people well, the, all the people that he hired, the best people that he hired to work he for had, him. Uh, there's so many voices there. You know, the latest thing with Stormy Daniels is that... Well, those uh, are, that's a separate thing. That's not the people. No, but it's an, it's another example. They hired the best people. You know, he's got that Cohen he's guy. He's the one that said it. It's not us saying it. No, I know. Yeah. Obviously. Obviously. I No argument there. What I'm yeah. trying to say is that I guess the, I'm trying to give an example where you have you know people around him. But a lot of people, or this White House lawyer that went behind his back, didn't tell him, and and then was uh, trying to ruin any investigation and was successful in torpedoing uh, getting a, an effective AG that would actually investigate the 2020. It never really happened. Yeah, but what was, about all, what about all the, Well, is that true? The, Did I just say what I said? Is that but Hold what on. about all the people that work for Is him? That, am I right about that? All the people in the White House that work for Trump, yeah, the lawyers, uh, everyone else, uh, the the uh, the RNC, all the people kept telling him, "Look, you lost, you lost, you lost," and he admitted he lost. But for four years, he's been perpetuating that he didn't. We that he, that's still not ended. That whole thing is but still it has ended. Contested. But no, you know, okay, no, here's no. okay. Let, let, let's just. For the sake of argument, let's say he still has doubts. Yeah. Instead of doing something for himself, don't you think for the sake of the country, he would move on and say, look, OK, Biden won this one. I'll be back in 2024. Let's move on. But all this rancor that we have here is because of him building this thing up. Just concede and say, OK, I lost this round. I'll be back in four years to another, yeah. fight another day. That would have been better for the country instead of better for his personal vanity do it for the country not yourself i think the idea from our side of things from the trump or trump brigade is that we think that there's been uh corruption going on and infiltration in particular by the chinese and it's uh problematic for that reason yeah well in canada and it's a global situation yeah. right? we talk there about is global. infiltration by the chinese the russians every so all these other canada, things. not apparently. to the extent not the extent to um to turn over the amount of votes that were actually cast if you took one percent that are fucked up votes it still wouldn't you know it still wouldn't be the yeah, so there's, I mean, there are from our side. I guess they found what was it going on in Chicago or something? They just found a thousand. Yeah, there's always something here there. and there. I mean, you know, I mean, Hillary didn't like it. Why didn't she like? What if she, Hillary, the next day didn't concede and she went on for four years when yeah. Trump? That would have been bad for the country. You know, we didn't like Trump winning, but we acknowledged he won the electoral college. You know. And and even Trump was surprised that he won that one, you know. But he I won think, it fair. He well, won it fairly. Yeah. Why didn't we go out and start saying that's phony? We saw someone. Well, that did happen. Right. Yeah, that did happen. I mean, you guys. But it didn't. But Hillary yeah, conceded the had, next day. Hillary conceded the next day. Uh, that's a fact. I find it interesting because. Uh, the like, I mean, because you had people standing up and they actually had, I think it was Biden that actually sl uh, slammed the gavel down, said, we can't do this anymore. Like, and there were a lot of people in the Dems that were saying it's a, an unjust election. Trump didn't win. And Biden actually mm -hmm. said, we're, we're going to, we're, it's yeah. them. We're, we've lost. This is yeah. I think everyone's trying to stop RFK because he's an idiot. Now he's not a part of a party, third party. We don't know if he's going to take votes away from the Republicans or the Democrats. Uh, he's I mean, not going. He's certainly not going to take them away from MAGA. Right? We're all in on Trump. But the thing is, is where of course, but where, but moderates like uh, Liz Cheneyites that could affect some Liz Cheney. Yeah. But they they don't have enough following it where it's going to make a dent. Trump's well, all leading he needs in, is all he needs is one or two percent of those. Trump's people. leading in polls like he never led in 2020. I agree. The numbers I agree. are all up across the board. Um, 
Uh, oh, sure. Yeah, uh, they still use the word for that illegitimate. I mean, she may have made some sort of a conciliary nature. Yeah, but yeah, she does call him illegitimate. Hillary could not uh, arrange people to do a coup. I agree with that, that but she wouldn't do that it. That was prob- Yeah, but she was- wouldn't do it. She wouldn't do it. The impeachment was problem problematic because it turns out it what all the stuff it was based upon was false. The Steele dossier, which they tried to say, oh, this had no role in it. It, in fact, it did. Uh, so there was no evidence of any Russian collusion, and that's what they impeached him on. And they were wrong to do that, and that alienates people as well. I think there needs to be, uh, uh, you know, Mazzy, you talk about the uh, the idea of the border budget. And there's got to be some, uh, uh, how do you put it, compromise Compromise. on that. Maybe uh, there's some uh, culpability on the left side going after Trump so heavily with, uh, what, two impeachment procedures? The second impeachment was a different thing. That was because of January 6th. And that's the fact that, you know, it wasn't a a parade of people, uh, just tourists, you know, going. I know. and it's well, funny when you look at all yeah, the Republicans. Of, yeah, go ahead. All the Republicans the day after, how they, you know, you know, you see them on videotape talking about what they experienced firsthand, running through there, and the violence that happened there. And then, of course, you know, a, a year later, that it's oh, it was just a walk in the park. How's Biden's impeachment going? I don't think Biden's going to be, be impeached. I, I just, I don't see it. I don't. I don't see there's if a they way. have evidence, present the evidence. And, uh, you know, well, you can make it up. I mean, it's possible if you want to make up evidence on anybody, you can lay anything at anybody's feet. You can fuck anybody up in this day and age. Well, the, but apparently they want to and they haven't, you know, and they're, and they're witnesses too. Yeah. like the dossier shit. Uh, this FBI guy turned out to be a fake and he lied about that, too. So both sides, they lie yeah. about this shit. You know, I, I agree with that. I agree with you with that. Um. Uh, about dump uh, compromise. Income. Did you know there's a thing now? The Republicans are trying to build uh, mail in ballots. All that stuff they've been against. They they think it'll help Trump. They because a lot of old people like mail in ballots. It's been safe for 20 years in America in a lot of states. It's been a thing, but now they're kind of quietly building up the mail. The good Uh-oh. thing for everybody. So, you know, they talk about outside that it's a bad and illegal and cheating, but they're trying to do it because they realize people want to, you know, a lot of elderly people want to mail uh, in their ballots. And it is safe because they, you know, they, if you send out a thousand ballots and you get 1500 back, you know, there's something wrong. If, if Norman Maslow sends in a ballot and a second Norman Maslow ballot shows up, they're not going to count both. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's uh, also, this ballot harvesting is such a you, you, you're reading, you're being like sold a bill of goods with that shit. Well, I know that. Yeah, the Republicans starting to do ballot harvesting as well. The idea is that uh, you just go out ahead of time. You do it in the churches, is grassroots. So you go, hey, folks, let's get your names on these ballots right yeah. away. Voting by mail in California, Washington, Oregon has been a thing for almost 20 years now. And all you got to do is check a box and you do it. It doesn't matter. You know, it, it even if it's mass mailing, you have to be registered. They only mail two people who are registered yeah and you have a signature and you can't be two people doing the same thing so what's the difference yeah if if you know if someone steals my ballot and i don't get a ballot i'm going to call them up and say hey i need a ballot i didn't get my ballot and they're not going to get two ballots from me Uh, i don't know why all of a sudden you know the republicans used to promote in fact the it was the republicans that started the mail-in ballot thing, not the Democrats. In California, it was the Republicans, so it wasn't a um, it wasn't a Democratic uh, genesis a project. Yeah, you know, it's just there's problems that needs to be addressed. I mean, our from our side, Massey, uh, we argue that the Dems are trying to bring in their voting bloc by getting a bunch of illegals in, uh, fast tracking them for green cards get them into the system and vote so that you can get your your vote up that way yeah but uh, we, we know got, a lot of Latino, our, a lot of latinos are going for republicans so that's not a guarantee well those you know? are the ones those are the ones that are already 
integrated. The, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United you know, States of America and for the Republic of Western find, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so you've got those are different. The, even they see it as different as now you know, the Republicans like don't even want. Are, okay, you know it's been historically, students are allowed to vote at where they live if they go to college. But a lot of these red states don't want it because all these, quote, Democrats are at the universities in, in red states, but it gets to be more Democrats coming and voting. They think they should have to go home and vote wherever they live out of state. But, you know, students have historically been able to vote where they go to school. And, you know, they're trying to get rid of that, too, in some states. And that's ridiculous. It doesn't matter where they vote as long as they vote once. I agree, they, you know. Well, they still say that. I mean, that 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 idea has been tried to be pushed. There's great. There's a lot of um, African people of African American uh, heritage that are voting Republican. So Trump's Trump's up in every category. Well, anybody can get a phony ID anyway. So that's like a disingenuous thing. You have to you have to sign it. They do do signature matches now by computer. Um, you know, and and again, if you don't have your ID and you go and you vote, if someone else goes in. You know, it can't be two yeah. Rachels voting. So the Republican Party has been hijacked by Trump. I'm surprised how quickly most they didn't try to give up. I mean, they fought him, but he won. There was an internal battle there, and Trump is winning it. It's still going on. It's still going on, but Trump has won. And the Mitt Romney's and the Liz Cheney's of this world and the uh, Lindsey Graham's, all that crowd. Uh, the uh, what's her name? Uh, Haley Mills. Remember her? She's running around trying to, you know, get some following. And it didn't happen. It's just the people, the base are not there. The people are saying enough. We're going with. Uh, Wolfie, I, su I support them checking signatures. I don't know about that thing. If, if that I think that's bullshit. If, if the Democrats went against that, I support checking signatures. They should check signatures. I don't know. California and Oregon. I mean, in Washington, they do. I don't know about other states. They definitely should check signatures. They do matches. I'm Chris, for you're that. Right. You're right, darling Nikki. Boy, she's a good, she's a looker. She's a looker. You got to have the good looking uh, chick politicians. You agree with that, Norman? Good looking good chick. You can like Ocasio Cortez. I mean, she's hot as hell. You got to have hot politicians. That's what I think. If you're a yeah, but you know, it's funny when people like to dump on her. For instance, she yeah. represents her she constituency. Is hot. Yeah. She represents the people uh, uh, where she is from. You know, yeah. it's like I, wherever you live, you get you vote for people your representative. So whether they're liberal or or conservative, that's your area. Yeah. You know, I'm, that's what it should be. We should be arguing about. Um, you know, well, hey, Rima, be, nice to see you. We should be arguing about the issues, not all this other stuff. Because well, it's I mean, kind well, of a, you, the stuff you your this conspiracy shit is made up shit. Really, it, you know, the percentage of it. If there's a one or two percent off, it, it it in occasional areas, it's bullshit. You know, you didn't complain about this the states and the areas that Trump wins in. You know, what about those? Are we going to complain about those being fake? Only the ones he loses. All the states he won. Did we complain about those? Well, if she if she gets reelected, she's representing her people. So, you know, yeah, but you're not going to represent 100 percent of your people. No, one, that never happens. Holy smoke. I, it's just unbelievable. Anyway, Maz, I love you. I'm glad you're here with me on this uh, great day, uh, Good Friday, as we wait, recall. Wait, wait. And Chuck, the Christian Chuck people T. recall the sacrificial Chuck death T. of Jesus Fuck Christ. you, Chuck T. It's not about, I don't what, want higher taxes. I want fucking, higher taxes. You're fucking I want, Chuck T. I want higher Good taxes Friday. to the corporations that Trump gave the deal to. I, I want middle class, lower taxes. Democrats have lower taxes on the middle class. The fucking, these companies, like, you know, no offense to Amazon, they paid no taxes. Apple paid virtually no taxes. That's not their fault. You can't blame them. That's the that's the Trump thing. So fuck you, Chuck T. Uh, Rich, anyway, I'll see Truth versus Alex Jones on HBO. I have not seen that. I don't have HBO. Not it's one of those ideas that I wouldn't necessarily tune in for. I think 
uh, you know, uh, Alex is a, a little too, uh, how do you put it? You know, he's a, he's a lightning rod of controversy and you know, it's easy. I, the, when I saw him with the black gloves on and the hyperbole that the guy does, so I'm not necessarily a fan of. Yeah, uh, and they're shitting does. on the streets in San Francisco on some blocks, yes, not all blocks. Yeah. And they're dragging black people from the back of a pickup truck in the south, in the rural south. So pick your poison. Well, I've, have you seen this other thing? We got problems in New York where apparently you just randomly slug women or getting slugged in New York. That's bullshit. I mean, you know, yeah, it's not happening. Yeah, I did push somebody. They push. They kill someone. They push someone. Push someone in front of a subway. Now a lot of that is mental health shit, and that yeah. should be it. That should be a big investment across America. Mm -hmm. That's not happening just in blue states. This mental health thing is horrible everywhere. It's the that's destroying America. That mental mental health and fentanyl, uh, the drug addiction. It's horrible. Uh, California, what about its population? Is that true, Massey? Is there an uh, an? Yeah, you know, it goes up and down, but. Um, it's steady. It's still the biggest, the fifth biggest economy in the world, in the yeah. fucking world. And it's supporting a lot of states in terms yeah. of paying taxes, what goes out, what comes in. More goes out in California, it goes into other states. Um, yeah. I mean, there has been an outflux, but that was during the pandemic, too. So I don't know what it is now, to be honest with you. But that's ha happened historically. In the 1980s, people were leaving California, moving up to Oregon and Washington. And that's when the whole idea of the Seattle freeze happened because Seattle didn't like all these like, you know, Californians coming up here buying cheap property. Um, it still happens. I mean, people move out of a certain area, you know. Uh, OK, here's our friend Skylar. He's, he's doing a real drive for his uh, book. He's done a short story on music related. But uh, you know, we uh, he's, he's trying to get things going there. He's dropped by, so he's welcome. Thor, welcome to the show. We've been following your adventures in India. Greetings from India. Thor is on a pilgrimage, a vacation, and the pictures have been wonderful, and you look so happy. Nice to be away from all the nonsense of the vinyl community. Very nice indeed, Thor. Have a great, safe, and fun vacation over there, and uh, it looks like you're having a great time. We need Rob up here now. I need... <laughs> Well, what's wrong? Well, now you've had a good, strong showing, Massey. Okay. Now we're coming up. It's not quite seven yet. You know, Rob, he's not an early he riser like you he's and me. He's, sleep, he's a sleeper. Uh, now, what about uh, the Sarah? So you didn't go over there? Did you see any of the Sarah show? No. I, you know, I'm not, I like Sarah and I like having conversations. I was on one show of hers ever. Um, okay. But I, but whenever I've switched and turned it, they have she, they have these bros. Um, these that's Doctor Robert just, to you, and obviously David. Well, I know I didn't see that. I didn't. I, the, like I, I was turning the channel or whatever yesterday, and I saw these bros. And the way they're, I watched like a, about two minutes, and the way they just talk. I mean, people are fucked up. Uh, they don't know how to talk to women. It's kind of like these uh, record collectors, but at least the record collectors aren't assholes about it. They just don't know, you know. But, oh, my yeah. God, these these I don't know if it's the generational thing, these like 30 year old guys. Yeah, they're young and they're they're in mating age. Right. So they're but still, I was you but know, my, trying to find a my mate. friends in my group were, were, didn't like treat women like that or talk about women, like, even in private. I mean, you know, sure, you talk about getting laid or whatever, but yeah, God, it's so grabbed by the pussy. Uh, I mean, you know, the words I got. Yeah, well, that's problem. Neil to groove, absolutely. That's uh, for I, you know, it, there's there are problems. Uh, yeah. Chuck T, that's ex exactly right. Keep it in your state and and tr don't roll these these things around. You know, don't try to make abortion illegal in every state. Take away, you know, these uh, reproductive rights in every state. You know, yeah. keep religion. Keep, you know, if you believe in you know, life after birth, life before birth, whatever, you know, keep it to yourself, keep the religion out of it. You know, you don't want an abortion. You don't believe to subscribe to that. Fine. Don't I think it, religious yeah. I'm not saying Chuck T in that. I don't know his thing on that, but, um, you know, keep it away. I, I agree with you. I mean, it's funny. There's a people that want states rights until they don't want states rights. You know, they want states rights, each individual, you know, California, 
California gets a lot of things wrong, believe me, but they get a lot of things right. And, and living in the Bay Area, the Bay Area has the best weather year round than anywhere in the country. Sure, hot weather in Florida and stuff, but moderate weather, you know, for the most part that I've been around, it's great. Okay, we're going to take this question. This is from Louis Golden. Welcome to the stage. Uh, Rob the Wax, incredible performer, uh, beloved figure here. We're talking about the difficulty to understand mystery of why there's barely any women in the VC. Uh, are, are you are you deaf, dumb, and blind, Louis? Louis is the try. He's got that question. Rob, any insight that you have on this? The people that are here. Okay, we got a lot of chicks here, don't we? No. What we do? <laughs> we, do we don't. Sue, you're a chick. Yeah, I'm. I don't. I'm sort of a chick. No, we don't count. I'm a good chick. I I don't consider Sue part of the VC. I think uh -oh. she's reluctantly here at all times. Okay, you're reluctantly here. You're not fully committed to the. She's, uh, she was draft. She was drafted. She was drafted. No, we, we, I, she's she an illegal. Dragged. I brought her in across the, she was the drag final border. She was drag kicking and screaming. Uh, okay, David says for Massey, you're right. How these guys ever find some of this extraordinary? It does make me feel incredibly blessed for the romantic life I've had. Well, you're a nice man, David, for the love of God. Yeah. You know, but it is difficult, you know. In, uh, and hold on, David. I, I believe a lot of the people that are here are romantically involved with themselves, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, females collect vinyl. They must not watch YouTube about it. Uh, no, so here, hold on. Hold on. Here, hold on. Here's the deal. From my view, there are a lot of girls who collect vinyl and have YouTube channels showing them collecting vinyl, <clears throat> but they are not part of the VC. I, it's no. so funny that we've got this crossing of, and uh, Patrick, uh, PB Thal warned us about this, don't cross the streams. It was a valiant effort by legend, legendary vinyl community member George Borden on Sarah's stream. But the men on the group just sunk into name calling. You're you're gay. You're a woman, not seemingly willing to hear other perspectives. Peter, so Peter witnessed it. That's his take on it. Well, wait, what, what what's this all about? I don't know. Okay, I'm um, asking. Do you want to bring uh, wax up? No, I just the, the, whenever I've switched to Sarah's streams, Sarah has the patience of an angel or whatever. Yeah, she's lovely. She's whenever she is so disciplined and so great, and yeah. you got these these. I guess they're 30 something age wise. I don't know. I, I can't tell anymore. You know, they could be 30 to early 40s, but probably mid 30s. I call them these uh, bros in a way. Yes. The way they talk about women, it's, I mean. Well, wait, hold on, hold on a second. I know Sarah has a yes. show. I know the tomato. What does George Borden have to do with it? That's George was on camera. He, George has joined forces with the tomato. He went oh. on the camera with the tomatoes? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Hey, that's the whole point. George is becoming Dr. you. Robert, and I know David yeah. goes there occasionally, and yeah. I know Dr. Robert was on one, but um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, there are I don't, more girls buying Swift records. I don't, I, 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 mean, I, don't, I don't see George being involved in that kind of nonsense. Yeah. Well, I do because he said apparently he was there. Uh, George, it, it, if you're watching, tell it, give us a debrief. How did it go? Sarah is the angel moderator. Yeah, I, you know what? I think I'm on, I don't know how many people are with me on the end about her. So, what? I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, my take on her is not the same as all you guys. Oh, I think really? Okay. I think she's are, a beautiful she, young lady. Yeah, I think she's she trying smart. to host a conversation. And, no, no, no. Uh, everybody. Thomas, you're smarter than Okay, that. what do you think, Rob? What's your contribution? Holy shit, well, that's I mean, who you are. <laughs> It's 100% she's here to garner people to come watch her streams. That's oh, my what's wrong with that? What's wrong no, with no, that? No, no. That's the only reason I'm here. Hold on, Mazzy. You're not here. Well, you're on everyone's stream, so <laughs> yeah. you're an odd man out. Okay, but Bobby, she's not, she's not here. She's not here to participate, I don't feel. She has right. been. Very sure she yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, this is my Everybody feeling. But she's not part of the VC. George, she's a guest. On, give me a she's debrief. Not, no, 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 I'm talking about... George. 
Okay, fuck the VC. I'm talking George, about this. George, George on up, put on a put on your shirt and come up here and, and yeah, yeah, put on a robe, a house coat will do. I'm talking about hey, this. Hold on. Happy Good Friday, Harry. I'm talking about this show. It's an okay it's Friday. Like, um, happy okay Friday. And, and keep your old man chop shop for a second, please. I'm talking about Harry. this show and the people that come here to participate <laughs> about this show. Who's fuck bigger? The, fuck the VC. You're taller. No, John, John. John's bigger than the than Jesus. Well, he's what he meant was he was taller than Jesus. <laughs> well, look at him. He's okay, George is going to give us a day for because we he got different opinions, but the man was there himself. So well, let's see what, how George enjoyed it and what he thought about it and everything else like that. Uh, David Donnelly, George was a legend last night. Kept us cool. Had Mazzy asked good advice and got attacked for his effort. Oh, I, wasn't, seen, I wasn't on there. I wasn't. I've on only there. seen. I've only seen George Borden get upset really once. So. Yeah. Okay, that's who you are. A great merch. You can buy it at the Ghost Store merch store. Fantastic. I'm, that's I'm, signature. That's a wax signature. You actually bought that, Harry? Absolutely. Yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> can I see it again, Harry? I yeah, he's got it on months. camera. He's got it on camera. That you we sell this at our store. It looks like the picture was it. taken. It looks like the picture was taken three minutes ago. Hey, hey, like, hold well, on. Yeah. Maz, yeah. Mazzy, yeah. just to be yeah. Mazzy, just to be fair, we asked that about 90% of the shit you show. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair I can't enough. believe it. I tell you. Oh boy. Uh, you know, Rob and Mazzy, you guys are so lucky. You know, you wake up in the morning, you yeah. don't have to worry about your hair, you know. I get up in the morning and my hair is like in my eyes and my face. It's, oh, yeah. hold on, Harry. Like Her guys. Harry, Harry. This is only like one fourth of my body. There's a lot of other parts oh. of there. This, I, you know, at that. this point in my life, I don't think I'd want to have a full head of hair again. There's know? a reason it's I'm like, called Harry, I think. Yeah, right. George Borden is God. He took the Manosphere douchebags to class, fake bumping vinyl. Well, that's I can't what watch we're that. I've tried. I tried watching a yeah, stream. It's, it's, but it's so it's just, it's so I mean, again, nothing it's wrong not, with it. It's it's I, you know what it's the easy. thing is? I like I like Sarah as a person. Like I think she's a very nice lady. So I don't care of what if she's here just to promote her channel. I don't care. And those no, guys, I'm sorry. The guys I heard are on, the guys right. I heard are very monotone. That's and I, right. I walked in, and the girl was standing there, and like I said, you want to fuck? And they'd say, oh, I don't want to fuck. And I said, I'm going to fuck. And I, said, I took her back, and I, and I said, like I'm married, a, but I want to fuck. Sounds and like a porno. Hey, hey, your pizza's here. Want to fuck? Okay, <laughs> you know, it's like that. Exactly. It's, what it's is it? Like that porno actor? Yeah. I like that Peter goes, Sarah's very transparent about her ghost growth channel. She's finding her sweet spot between a few worlds and is doing it with a great deal of patience, perseverance. I, think she's, I, I think agree. She's more power it. to her. Good I think her. she's finding her sweet spot. That she's getting a lot of viewers. I, you know what? I, you feel that way in a positive way. I feel the same way in a negative way. That well, see, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, is going to go Despite what I she's portray here, back. despite what I portray here, I'm actually a positive person. I you are very right. positive, yeah. man. Yeah, despite my bullshit about, you know. I'm AB you, positive myself. Oh, no. Oh, it's a blood type. AB normal. Good blood type humor. But anyway, I think she's lovely. I hope maybe we'll get her today coming in. I don't know. I'm surprised that she only has. It. The, the amount of uh, subs she's got. I would have thought because she'd be way more than that. Not, she's not, she hasn't been consistent. She's still in the developing stage. She hasn't got her rhythm yet. She's got to create. Uh, uh, hold on. Can guys. I ask you she guys a question? Fine. Oh, yeah. Why aren't you this apologetic about me? <laughs> well, what about you? You're doing great. Shut up, you moron. You know, because you because get, that's who you are. That's who you yeah. are. You know what? I, what I like about Rob is Rob and I can just go at each other like like shit. And I said, George, George, the end end of the pilot tape because we got to get to George. George, uh, congratulations! Your first appearance of being on the uh, Sarah Tomatoes show. She is and lovely. last and last. <laughs> okay, now, okay, so really, is that really how you feel? You may not return. I would not uh, piss on that show Good if morning, it was on David. fire. Really? <laughs> okay. Why did Whoa. you go? Up? Hold on, I want to hear from George. So George, because I wasn't there, but I think David's not having a good hair day this morning. David looks fantastic. <laughs> I love David. We we'll take him any way we can get him. I tell you David that much. David's a rock. Me god. When I get up. <laughs> David is a freaking rock god. 
Now, George, uh, so you you go up there because uh, Sarah's lovely by every account. But who who was on the panel with you? Do you remember any of the names of these people? Uh, douchebag number one, douchebag number <laughs> yeah. two, douchebag wow. number three. Where, did you know what kind of environment it was when you hopped on? Well, I, Were I'd you seen number two. Four? I'd uh, apparently I became the punching bag number one oh, uh, yeah. because I was uh, gay, I was old, oh, and uh, oh, because I was um, because I was st sticking up for a somebody who they were pummeling with misogynistic bullshit. Oh yeah. Uh, well, they all turned on me. I, I, oh, that's one of them. What's totally true. And it didn't, uh, you know, I just told them to go F themselves, you know, like I, I, I literally was saying shit like that to them. And um, I was proud of you, George. I'm going to oh, go. Uh, bye everybody. I'm going to go watch the stream. <laughs> oh yeah. You're, it's going to be. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure. I'm sure it'll get clipped. And as a matter of fact, that was the funny thing is they uh, they were calling me the uh, the F word, you know, for gay, like the, just blatantly. Uh, I don't even like to use that word. They were calling you Felix? But they no. don't they do not do their research on people, George, do they? That's the thing. It's like they came, yeah. but, you know, there was some guy, you know, came flying in at me as soon as I said something. And, you know, when you said something, and it's like, you have no idea what my background is. And, and yeah. I'm older than them as well. So, I mean, that's probably why I've managed to get to this age without knowing what even the red pill, blue pill thing is and its stuff. And and like I say, you know, my uh, my romantic back catalogue, some of you on here, and it's uh, it's pretty fucking good. OK, George, George <laughs> can you, uh, the, the question is coming up from Chuck. George, what is the Manosphere? What exactly is I, it? I, I, I don't know. Look, I'd seen a couple episodes of her show. One time where it was like her and a friend and they were talking about stuff. And then another one where she was with some other guys and it seemed to be normal. It just, I don't, I, and so that, that was my experience with that show. And uh, because of the fact that I had had some issues with uh, uh, this guy uh, on another channel who's everybody's mad at, well, uh, right? and I'd had some, uh, yeah, and I'd had some back and forth with William him. William or Dunty? No, William. Uh, well, no, well, it was, it, yeah, and 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 I'm not even like going to mention same, his no. name. We we were watching this show. Me and Nick were watching the show, and so yeah. I said, "Well, I'll, I'll jump on," because I just yeah, said in the chat, I stopped by and yeah. kind of said, "Hey, how you doing? Like your show? What I've seen of it?" She's like, "Come on up." So I came on up, and I it was uh it was oh. like a booby trap. Oh, it's like the Moonies. The Moonies, they invite you over for dinner. Oh, come over oh, for dinner. A booby How long trap. were you up there, I love the way you, you oh, I, I, that. I stayed up there for a couple hours. I wasn't going to back out and rage quit just so they could, uh, you know, chase me yeah. away by calling me. A, now, you know, were, you, did you, were you upset? Were you fired up? Or did you were you chill? Everybody says you were pretty chill. I was, yeah, but there was times where, you know, I'm always doing this kind of shit like I am right now. And they, yeah. they would, they would take that as, oh, look, and he's getting flapped up like a chick. He must be gay. Oh, he's, look, he's, and he's so old. And, oh. you know, and, and then one of them even got to a point, he's like, yeah, what are you going to do about it? Like they were going to have a fight with me through the internet. I will it punch so you. Stupid. I'm going to punch you. Yeah. Yeah. I will kick your asses, yeah, right? I you should have ass. that coffee mug today. It, it, it what it came down for to me was I was just I was just thinking to myself I I don't know how anybody could act yeah. like that it yeah. was just you know I think was, and here's the deal I think really for Sarah it's a crime of convenience that that's kind of the thing that brought her an attractive woman goes into that environment reacts to against it kind of you know standing up for women's rights in this uh, male dominated uh, and juvenile male let's keep that in mind too juvenile male dominated environment and but that was her kind of gateway i think it would be who for her if she just avoided that and just because she's such a great presence and she's charismatic and she's got a great delivery that that lady could go into any uh, community as long as she has the integrity you know the internal fire herself for it and then do her own thing, and I think she'd be very, very, very successful. Oh, yeah. no, no, be fine. She'd be, be fair, fine. It'll work to be out. Fair, Ra to be fair, Rachel, we yeah. said that about you. <laughs> well, I, and it's, I'm doing great. I love my records. Well, yeah, I, but, think, I, I think I think both Rachel and Sarah are really good ringmasters. You know, they're they're just they're they're great. And I think 
you know, you've got to hand it to Sarah. She's done this really well. And like, we're all talking about it yeah, now. Well, and it, it's because it's else. just so jaw dropping, you know I mean? It's yeah. when they, George managed to sort of succeed last night by saying <laughs> something, by, say, by say, saying something sensible and like a really good point. And then just the fact that they all went on him like a, like bees, you know, it just, it proved his point. Well, it's so he didn't have to say, he yeah. didn't have to say anything after that. It was like, there you go. It's extremely no. short sighted yeah. because one of the days these kids are going to wake up and they're going to be 40, 50, and then they're going to be quote, the old guy and some young punks going to be saying it to them. Go ahead. Yeah. Harry. Can you, can you show concert, butt buddies comment? Yes. Uh, wait, if someone calls me concert butt buddy, that's not a term of endearment? No, uh, generally not, I would assume. That's not what you told me. Uh-oh, controversy. <laughs> There's uh, only a few people that are butt yeah. buddies. A lot of, well, and I would go, have you ever kissed a girl, right? Uh, that's because you have two living beers that reason well. Yes, that's true. Uh, Papa's already 40. Yeah, he is. Is he really? Uh, there's something. There's something wrong with that guy, though. Yeah. There, I, I mean, scary wrong. Okay. Uh, well, I don't think he's violent, is he? Do you think he's going to grab a gun and uh, you know go? I, wild I don't think he's things? violent, but I just think everything. Everything's about him. Everything's personal to him, and it's like, what does that sound things? like, Harry? Who does that sound oh, like? Oh, Rachel. Rachel. Who does that sound like? like? Who does Would that sound like who's running for president now, Harry? Okay, leave oh, Biden well. alone. I don't want Biden pushing. <laughs> right. Go ahead, bro. Would you be surprised if you woke up tomorrow morning? The whole morning? generation. Shush. Would you yeah, be surprised yeah, if you woke right. up tomorrow morning and heard that that guy did something stupid? I would, would not be be surprised in any way, shape, or form. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Tim Clear, the region today would make an interesting dominator. Mm. That lady. Now that would get her, her subs up. That lady, a former no, bartender, <laughs> so she brings those skills. You've seen anybody that's ever, you know, have been in a bar before to, to and, and frequented a, a local uh, tavern, if you will. You see those ladies that work, though, they know how, especially if they're good looking like Sarah, they know how to handle guys. She seems like, like nobody's most, business. She seems like one of the most patient people, you know. I, yeah. I don't know how she does it. She doesn't have Chuck you know, to say "fuck you" to, you know. I, as a dominatrix in S and M, it's it's hard to use a safe word with a ball gag. Hmm. Uh, okay, uh, it has nothing to do with being juvenile. They're guys, straight guys. I see it all the time. Yeah, but there's different uh, there's uh, different ways of going. Like when I'm going to tell you a story. When I was a young kid, I'd be what <laughs> seventeen or so. Yeah, 1975. I can I know exactly when it was. Uh, John Lennon's. Uh, uh, album comes out and I'm in an argument with my friends, my male pals over, and maybe it doesn't count because I'm transgender, but the point is that uh, they were arguing about Yoko going, Lennon's, uh, he's so rich. He's, he's a rock God. He could get any chick in the world. He goes for that skag Yoko. And why would he do that? He could get any chick he wants. I go, you morons. I go, he loves her. It's beyond physical. That's just yeah. part of it. He loves her. He loves her mind, her soul, the love that she returns to him. That's, That's exactly it, Rachel. Him. Hey, uh, and, hey, Rachel. And, Rachel, yeah. you're gay. Yes. Some guys, some guys will time. never get that, and they'll have empty relationships forever. They just won't get that. You know? but yeah, I, I don't think. I don't think. I that, disagree a little bit with what Scott's saying. Go ahead, George. I don't. I don't think that those guys represent the majority of straight guys that Not I've ever all. met in my no. life. Correct. They, I mean, this is some knuckle dragon stuff. This is caveman <laughs> shit. The this it was so the some of the things they were saying to this woman on the screen were it was it was so. Were they uh, were they mean to Sarah? Was, were they saying uh, no? Yeah. Sarah had another lady guest on, yeah. and and this lady guest was just she was very nice lady, yeah, and she was saying things, and these guys were just saying the most horrific stuff that a guy would say yeah. to a woman, mm -hmm. and it was it was all cool. It was like normal. I was yeah, I was like flabbergasted by it. Yeah. But George, George, I have a generation, George. 
George, I have a question for you then. It seems uh-huh. to me that a lot of the people that come to be on YouTube and no, um, not a, a calling out any of you, are particular people. Like they're socially stunted. The, if these guys were real guys, wouldn't they be out in the real world hunting chicks? Why are they on the internet? They are. Talking? They are. I mean, that's only a couple no, no, hours. No, no, Mazzy, they're not. But, they're on no, the no, internet no, no, talking. They're no, on but the some of them, people some of them, when, when I've heard them, some of them are. They talk about their experience. Yeah, they not talk. They talk. Mazzy, how many people have you met around here that talk shit? And they actually well, don't I, go I out. Understand. I understand. What, 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 I, Look, what I can't great. say, Rob, I, Rob I, I, I would tend to, I would, hold on, I would tend to agree with what Rob is saying. But as soon as I got off, they just went back to talking about red pill and all of these weird little uh, acronyms for little sex of the population. And then started talking about how the problem with the world today is that people spend too much time online and they have no social skills uh, to uh, behave amongst each other. And a man needs to be a man and he needs to be an alpha and he needs to almost like he needs to go out hunting while we stay home gathering. And that became, I was, it was, we astonishing. don't spend too much time online. Come on. Those In there, the- yeah. Oh, Harry's you know, but you, you, his phone. Get off the Rachel, phone. They're all, 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 all want to be frauds. They're all want to do frauds. You can do both. <laughs> I get out a lot. I go out a lot. I mean, not, you know, I go out a lot. Yeah, but the Victoria's line. Secret doesn't count, Mazzy. <laughs> right, yeah, right. We all, we all saw your mall video, Mazzy. We know you go out. <laughs> okay. And, this and how long was that? Six minutes? Holy shit. Five minutes? Listen, Ice Castle doesn't mean said. you're gay. If you like the beauty of Ice Castle, it's a fine film that's no. directed for all orientations. Okay? Mall. For your information. Mall, <laughs> Mazzy. That's a new name. Hey, Rev. <laughs> Rev, mental institutions started using ice castles to see if people had their touch. All right. Okay. First time Rev, I got a bug, Rev, everybody. Why don't you come on up here. Get up here. Uh, come on up. Join the fun. Uh, 170. We won't pick on you. watching right now. Uh, can we get some thumbs up helping with the program? It really does help. Let's YouTube know that we're doing a thing. Thumbs up the program. It will be uh, gratefully received. Thanks so much, everybody. Um, and thanks for being here on this uh, on this quote Good Friday. So uh, nice to have everybody with us. Uh, we need more mall videos. There is a call for it. But anyway, I just think at the end of the day, Sarah is a, a lovely girl, and she has every right to be here because, especially on this program, because we talk about everything. We, you know, we had a massy political minute a little earlier. Uh, okay, Loki, stop doing the uh, the percentages and all that on that whole thing. That's just crazy. <laughs> uh, I heard the NSA used Ice Castle to hide secret men. I'm just sick and tired of all this controversy around Ice Castles. George, did you ever have the opportunity to produce, or did they ever reach out to you and say, could you be our producer on Ice Castles? Apparently, no. it's got quite the cult following. Uh, no, I never was that Marvin Hamlish, or I don't think I no, I never had the chance to work with Marvin. Marvin Hamlish, Hamlish is fantastic, great keyboard player. I uh, just read David's CV. This is David Donnelly. David could write a great autobiography focusing on the musicians he has worked with. Yeah, he's extreme. I mean, he's a working musician and worked with a lot of household names, folks. A lot of them. Uh, these are immature, poorly social. Doesn't require a whole lot of thought on this to generalize. It. Raised on the internet are different. Hey, Rachel, yeah. Can I have a moment? You sure can, uh, weirdo. I you actually, are. seriously, I want to apologize to Chuck T. I went overboard right. yes. calling him out. There's a lot of yeah. other wankers here who believe in this fake shit. So yes. I apologize, Chuck T, to, to you to, to, to say, yeah. I said, fuck you, Chuck T. Yeah. I take it back. That was I was over the top. I was pumped up vinyl and i went over the top and i i thoroughly apologize Who, who's chuck oh, t wow. chuck who's, t's a little beloved member of our vinyl community I, I, rachel i don't know who chuck t is well you mean Rob, chuck t is I, on I here i don't even know who chuck t is on here does chuck he really here fuck him chuck t is our <laughs> friend leave him alone you know. Rachel, Rachel. Once a year, yeah. once a year, I listen to this, and this All year right. I get to listen on a reel to reel. It's very nice to have that. 
Uh, OG, reel to reel on that, Harry? Uh, hey, what with a, Ian Gillian hey, from hey, Deep Purple. Hey, yeah. yeah, Harry, who the hell do you think you are? Hey, concert buddy, I will not sell this, this Jesus by numbers. Let me just show okay, you it. Closely. Here it comes. Sorry, this David. Was, we'll get this to was a birthday present about seven or eight years ago from Coffee Julie. This yeah. was my birthday present. Well, it's this is one of the best birthday presents I've ever gotten. Well, that's very I, sweet. I see a lot of the similarities there. Uh, you know that well. Wow. Yeah, never mind. Uh, never mind. The percentage game is not great. Um, can we wear khaki shorts? It's going to be 80 degrees here. Holy smokes. Yeah, summer's coming. Isn't that great? Long, cold, lonely winter, as uh, George Harrison sang. At what point can we wear white again? Uh, after uh, Labor Day, apparently, oh, like you got to so wear it after Labor Day. You, you can't aren't wear it you not after supposed Labor to wear? Day. Yeah, you got to wait. You got white's coming up in May or something. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go on uh, the Manosphere and ask them if, ask if you can still wear white. They, they won't even know the tradition. David Donnelly, you had a yeah. comment. Speak to the people. I did. I I, I thought it'd be good if uh, it would, would could me and Mazzy just have what I'd like to call a wank a minute. Okay, hang on. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay uh, go is, ahead there. David, that means something different in the man. Of <laughs> oh, I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I apologize <laughs> for mentioning your hair when you first got up here. Okay, I get oh, it. Thank you. No, you're fine. You're fine. But no, it's just there. There are in in England there are stages of wanker, right? Okay, there are people you love. Matt uh, waxed is a good example. Is he's, he's someone like that? I would introduce and someone said, "Here's he's waxed." He's a, he's a great guy. He's a bit yeah. of a wanker, but uh -oh. you like him. You know, it's just that there's a little bit in there because he knows that he winds people up and he kind of enjoys it. But there's, I, that's Talk, fine. Talk slow. Then, I'm taking notes, David. Yeah. Then there's the next generation up, which is like, oh, God, he's such a wanker. But, you know, like he, he's all right. He's all right. That's the next stage up, you know. And then you get the, uh, real just assholes that i've come across like you know uh -oh. like certain tour managers and stuff you go like oh god it, you know we'll get <laughs> through it but proper man, wanker. he's an absolute wanker does their name yeah. rhyme with humping vinyl no 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 <laughs> it's uh i'm not going there um, well, i guess i'm not going to be a tour manager now because i know yeah it's, yeah it's a yeah, no win no, situation it's not so bad like rob for instance waxed <laughs> you've only ever annoyed me once like really genuinely got to me oh, <laughs> do tell only, only once <laughs> it was during the ghosties right it was during the ghosties oh. and craig danger was doing this brilliant speech he dressed up for it and it was fun i was really enjoying it and and just when he was about two lines from finishing and he'd he'd obviously written this thing you just leaned forward and said something like yeah but how about three hours of rectal thermometry or whatever it was you said you know <laughs> and it was like and it was like oh fuck i was enjoying that waxed i was trying to and he gave up as well he didn't finish and i just yeah. thought oh, and we haven't bit, seen him you since. were a bit you were a it bit wax, a what a wanker you're, you're a, a bit wanker. of a wanker rob for that <laughs> but uh you know i, I, I like apologize it. to you but not to craig david <laughs> And Bip Bop, oh really Bip Bop, Bip Bop was great. Yeah, yeah, John. yeah, yeah, it was great. AGK, what a man. AGK put there's, on. there's a man that scrubs up well. Jeez. He cleans yeah. up well, doesn't he? He's a good-looking young man. Uh, can we do a ranker wanking, a wanker ranking? No, we're not doing <laughs> it. I've like done God. a wank, ranker ranker. Oh. Yeah, this should has. be a channel, RTW, ranking the wankers. I love yeah. that. Uh, Tim goes, true. Mazzy usually doesn't get emotional, uh, emotional like that. Not Mazzy, you're very emotional. But yeah, Mazzy, um, Mazzy did Morrissey as a, as, a, as a wanker. It's absolutely right. You know, he wouldn't go on at Coachella because um, he could smell a burger van. Oh, fuck off. You're a rock star. Get exactly. on with it. You have to get, yeah, there's certain uh, uh, responsibilities that come with the territory. George, how are things going? Are you enjoying the, the live stream experience, all that? You have a good following. Uh, different people come into your sphere of influence. So that that's always something that, you know, any of us that do these live streams has to encounter. You got your good uh, uh, wingman in the form of uh, Nick Pantasy, who's one of the best we got, uh, bar none. Uh, yeah. We love Nick over here. and uh, But now you've got some new characters that have been joining the action, and you have to... They bring their own chemistry. It's quite the uh, challenge to keep the thing on the tracks when you have different people joining from here and there. 
Yeah, and it, it's uh, it's funny. It seems like it, no matter who comes on, someone's going to be upset about it somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> and so okay, then we'll just we'll just go with that, you know. Yeah, and 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 but we're not, you know, it's it's we're having a fun time and we like it. And sometimes it, it you know, we're we're trying to pay more attention to people getting flamed and and booting people out when they get out of hand. Uh, yeah, you know, we we weren't we we had taken the 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 stance that hey every everybody's welcome well you know and then people yeah. come in and do horrible stuff and beat beat people up in the chat so we're uh we're watching that a little bit closer and um yeah you kind of have to fun. it's a reluctant job you know a lot of the uh kit back on this program program came not directly one-on-one -on -one with me and anybody for example one of the, the the biggest examples is dave the pickup artist he was in here but he, for whatever reason, him and PB Thel didn't get along. And so he kept going after Patrick all the time. I go, Dave, you can't go after Patrick. I tell him. And for this went on for months. And finally I said, Dave, if you keep on, I'm gonna I'm gonna block you, man. I'm gonna and as soon as I blocked him at that moment, then he turned against the whole channel and everything. He was fine. He, he had really limited himself to going hardcore after Patrick. Once I blocked yeah. him. I don't think Patrick was the only one he went after. Well, who else was he going after? Was he going after you back then? Oh, Patrick? yeah, I'm a big part of it. Look, I'm looking, the most I'm looking for a week from this Sunday. I'm going to be yeah. hanging out with George Borden and and Pibithal in the Okay, Central. a week this Sunday. Now, where are you guys going to be? Yeah. There's the KUSF uh, record show at USF. It's uh, it's right a few blocks from the Jefferson Center Plain Mansion by the Hate. Okay, so you're going to be in San Francisco. I'll be there for like the Bay Area. Eight or, I'll be in the San Francisco in the Bay Area for about eight or nine days. Uh, I like this comment. Dave Pounsko, George's streams are always interesting. George is a good guy. I told you when he, when George first came onto our radar. Once I learned about his re uh, resume as a producer, Jack Douglas, The Tubes. Rachel's a star fucker, George. What's that? <laughs> Rachel's a star fucker. David and George. It's, it's not who they are. It's oh, who they no. know. It's who they know, who they worked with, you know. No, it's not just who they, but no, it's the no, rest of the You're a star fucker. Let's admit it. All right. That's yeah, well, well, what it, what it, we, like it's I just love this about the right. channel. <laughs> like it does, as required, as required. No, it's you get these people. I'm so impressed with the rest of me because I mean Jack Douglas, man. See, holy shit, double fantasy. Are you kidding me? Yeah, no, I, I, that's that's kind of yeah, weird. But what else I, has he done? I don't really know anything else. What what else has he done? Me, Jack Douglas. Jack, Douglas. Uh, the New York cheap, uh, New York Dolls, Aerosmith, uh, cheap cheap trick, trick, Aerosmith, John Lennon. Yeah. So nobody big or anything then. <laughs> no, no, just the minnows. Just the minnows. Okay. Mm. Um, you know, one of the things that we also did uh, was we just took Vinyl Community out of the title of our streams because yeah. people were getting upset because I, nobody's talking about records because me and Nick have pretty varied interests. Nick works on amps. Nick was a yeah. touring musician. I work in a recording studio. I, you know, there, there's other interests that we have. And people were getting, I think it was kind of false advertising to just say Vinyl Community because sometimes we'll spend three hours talking about guitars and, uh, you know, so all of uh, we've we're we're fine tuning. Yeah, well, I like that idea because we play around a little bit because we have a lot of musicians like David on board. Uh, Harry's a musician, so we were talking about. No, no I'm right. not. <laughs> yeah, you are. You are. You you, yeah, you are, it. Harry. I like your. You stuff. you like downplay it, Harry, but you are, and you've written a song at least once. A song. <laughs> yeah, you Yeah, but many people. I've never written a song. You know. A lot of people have never done that. But, I mean, we love the instrument, the guitar, or keyboards, whatever it may be. And, you know, you're still a musician. If you have that uh, instrument and you can play a few chords, three chords in the truth is all you need, Harry. That's rock and roll. I didn't start playing until I was, like, 50. Yeah, but a lot of famous actors. I wish I had started when I was in my teens. Later. Well, of course. everybody. But I, but I was going I was gonna to take my first guitar lesson, yeah. and my mom said, you can do that next week. The Beatles are playing tonight. So. Uh, Patty Smith's well, second I never album. went back to the guitar lessons. Uh, Patty Smith's second album, uh, Radio Ethiopia, produced by Jack Douglas. So uh, she's got. Okay, some I see DJ Johnny L, the troublemaker, uh, the ringleader, uh -oh. is here today. Okay, <laughs> yeah, stirring hey, it up, stirring Mazzy, it up. Look at him, Mazzy. I, 
I la- I was li- in the living room on the laptop, and my w- my wife was the, on the couch under her laptop, and I was laughing so hard I almost pissed myself. Oh, I lost it. On. I lost it totally. I had one of those moments that I had. I couldn't like, help myself. Yeah, it was pretty funny. It was good. It, there was no no harm done. It, it, we didn't really do it. You know, it wasn't to, to do any harm to, because that guy's pretty good on on uh, on the um that auction thing. He's really really good. So. But uh, I did. But I did bid five bucks on a fifty dollar record. But I guess it didn't go to. Did, did you get it? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. They were too. Ex- they were too kind of expensive. Remember, it's like American money, right? And for us, it'd be like probably double or something. Well, so we are in America. You know, we're sorry that you live north, but we're not sorry. <laughs> but you just you can't take advantage of our our wonderful economy. The American economy yeah. is a beacon for the rest of the world. By the way, George, I I really uh, I, you you guys commented on George and uh, he is he is good. I I watch his streams a few times. Um, not going on the panel or nothing because really, it, sometimes he talks about things really interesting, but sometimes <laughs> above, above my pay grade. Sometimes <laughs> that, 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 that George guy, he goes on and on. Oh, oh I'm so. Oh, he's I got, got, he's got I, this I, mood I, lighting. I, it looks like he, he lives in a brothel. <laughs> I do have uh, I have no, a, my nickname is too. George Boredom. I know that. So <laughs> that. it's hard. It's hard also with the uh, with the window of opportunity because you're up against PB Thal, and that's a pretty big channel to go up against uh, for your thing. But you create your own channel. But there's going to be a lot of cross fertilization. You're a nice guy, George. PB Thal, Patrick's a great guy too, and so yeah, you know a lot George of you, everybody likes nice. you both. PB Thal's great. We well, get, we get we get along right fine in that time slot too. Uh, Mark Copernicki, who likes to go on uh, Patrick's, always stops by our show for the first yeah. hour and then stops over to Patrick's. And then when we end, we jump over into Patrick's stream. It's yeah. always it's always fun. You know, it, it's I, I do I do enjoy Patrick's history. stream, but my my only issue with that is with the music playing. It's so hard to hear what people are saying, and I understand what he does, and but it's just so hard to hear <laughs> other people. Just, yeah, yeah. Well, so Harry, nice Harry, when 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 PB Thal's on, I I tend to put it through the stereo, and it's a lot easier to hear. Then it's like you know Is the it? music's in the background. It's like talking to someone at a party, or well, not at a party. That would be a bad yeah, thing. It's like being like, you can't hear, shouting in people's ears. But um, but no, it's uh, it's more like you know if if I someone came round to my house, as you're all welcome, obviously. Um, if I put a record on and stuff, I put it at a volume where we could sit on the sofa and have a chat. If you put Patrick's stuff through a pair of speakers it's like that it's okay. like hearing people in the room i find if i just listen on my laptop or something it, you're right there's the, the 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 tinny frequencies in the music cuts in on the same frequency i'm being a producing engineer now I, george knows what i'm talking about certain certain frequencies will cancel other frequencies out mm. you know um, you because they're on the David, same level what can yeah, we David, do to you're cancel you're out correct, you're correct with that um what you're you're right with that because if you if you put um like I have surround sound and and if I put surround sound and listen to the to this it sound it's it's like people are in the room and it's a lot better I think more warm mm. and a lot better I think mm. yeah I, I agree yeah yeah well oh, so, oh sorry uh, Harry I didn't mean to uh, interrupt there uh... oh quite fine Johnny <laughs> I'm just I'm just here waiting for Renee anyways no. uh, okay. oh where George go. <laughs> Oh, thank God he's gone. Jeez. I'll tell you one thing from last night, though, and this is, you know, because I always, I always try, you know, tell the truth and what have you. But uh, William popped up first with Ray, with with um, Sarah, and um, and I have to say, I had to give him ten out of ten for he was explaining about some records, and I thought because you know she loves the fact that we all love records, you know, and William did. A, a brilliant. I know you guys will probably find this hard to believe. He did a really brilliant, concise review of. Um, Asia by Steely Dan. He was just explaining that it was a steady waxed weight. <laughs> well, Rachel, why isn't a Thunderbolt hit David Donnelly? In <laughs> uh, but you know, you know, if, you know, if uh, he, he did, doing he, that, people would it. accept him. No, yeah, I, 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 was... gotta, I don't know you well enough yet. I got to wait. I got to learn about you. Just hang out, be in the peanut gallery. We, I got to. I got to learn your vibe. David, I said the same uh, thing to his face. Yeah, if he just yeah. talks about records and is flipping, he's great. But then he all of a sudden 
has, yeah, but there's, he there's, something, the need. there's something inside the guy because I said to him after that, I said, William, I have to say, for, if someone was sitting with me that had never heard Steely Dan, never heard, I said, that was a brilliant description of what you're going to get, you know, because a lot of us on here, we sort of, you know, we've had the MoFi, we've had the this, that and the other and that, but he, he <laughs> really did describe that well, but he, he leaned forward and he goes, that sounds like a diss, David. You know, and it's like, why he takes everything so personal? Yeah, it was like, no, I'm I'm complimenting you, but if you could just do that sort of thing, it's exactly. great. That black history thing was good. That if you want you know, to be part of the, thing. Of he the needs vinyl to community, knit, talk about he vinyl. needs to knit the good stuff together and just but I worry about him because it was almost like I could sit there watching him last night after doing this brilliant thing, and then these guys came up, and it was almost like three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and it's like, oh no, William, you're doing so well. You know, and yeah, uh, so the season of his destruction of well sown within his own psyche, basically, and he's uh, uh, he falls victim to his own worst tendencies. So, uh, that's uh, grab another cuppa. Sorry, I'll be back. Yeah, yeah, I wonder, yeah. I wonder how many friends he has outside of a computer. Don't know, you wonder. Uh, yeah, wonder, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe Alexa, more records discuss the better the stream, I say, especially when it's newer art, artists. Uh, well, it depends, right? You might, it, it depends what it is, it varies all the time. The different things, uh, factor in. Oh, there's George. Sorry, my internet dropped out there for a second. All right, welcome back, George. Oh, then good. Then you didn't hear anything we said. Then, oh, good. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> you should have heard Rob. You can go back later and watch it, though. Yeah, yeah Harry, I'm getting to not like you very much. There hey, is a level. Hey, look, who's the one that sent me a text and said, I don't like thinking about you? There, yeah. <laughs> you don't like no, thinking no, about me. Why did you send me a text I, I, saying that? Texting me, I don't think about you. There is a level of insecurity that, you know, is well within the parameters of normalcy, but there is a line when you're so insecure that it, it produces its own problems uh, that follow after it. Overcompensating could be one of those. And, and because you're insecure, it, you can come off looking like an egomaniac, but you're not really an egomaniac. You're just, it's out of insecurity. It's not out of boldness or arrogant look, confidence. Look. Uh -oh. That's from Rob. That's the kind of okay. stuff Rob sends me. All right, Rob. Okay, Rob, stop <laughs> it, okay? Like, you got to gotta slow down a bit. Harry's married and Wakes everything. Me up at three o'clock. He's thinking about me at three in the morning and sends me that text. Well, wow. Rob was in the shower when that went out there. <laughs> That's scary. Rob, scary. Rob, sent me, Rob sent me this yesterday. This is true. All right. Here we go. Uh, Bob, only 290 Bible. So I got to get mine. I got to help out yeah. with that. I got to help out with that. Maybe he'll sign it for you. You know, Harry sent me this yesterday, and I don't uh -oh. even know the reason why. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, what do we got here? <laughs> Hey, Dick Van Dyke, we love Dick. Why would I, I send you answer. that? Why, why would I do that, Rob? You're lying. I, I'm asking myself. You're lying. I'm calling you on your bullshit. You know, I I found I found that Harry has been really bitter lately. Uh, I think it's because bitter. he didn't win. I think it's because exactly. he didn't win one of those. Last there. Blast I think blast that's stuff, Massey. Too too much. Too much. Too. Okay, soon. I don't yeah, want yeah, one. That's for you. <laughs> that's better. We like that. <laughs> Okay. That, 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 actually, Spock. that actually worked. Yeah, that's a good one. Elvis worked. Spock. Yeah, uh, I don't know about that. Ooh. Oh, I don't know about that. No, yeah. that's not. First of all, I mean, it's, it's not good. Good. You're right. It's the Trump good. on the cross thing. It's yeah, like, that's not. Uh, that would actually equate to black. It looks like soap on the. It was. I thought it was an uncooked turkey when you first. Saw it. Yeah, it is an uncooked turkey. <laughs> Uh, it's exactly what it is. What is the Trump? I was just a, it's just a uh, marketing thing, a Trump branded thing. Hey, Louie, I've got a bunch of uh Steely Dan records I picked up. I'm going to send to you. Okay, hmm. Steely Dan. Yeah. I'm just you, looking Harry. up Trump Bible. A personal comment to someone in the peanut gallery. Got it, got it. Uh, <laughs> we're going to need a bigger cross. What time is breakfast, George? <laughs> What do you mean today? Or yeah. uh, I I, uh, I haven't even thought about breakfast yet. Yeah. I don't even know what night. time. What time does that K that USF uh, meet start? And what time are you guys going to get there? Do you think? 
I think it starts at 10. I don't know. You know, I Patrick probably won't just be there at 10, me. but I'll, I'll text you guys. Patrick will just tell me what to do and then we'll so do it. So get us um, a uh, Trump Bible. Go order one up. I want to get a Trump Bible. There's well, a okay, now you realize that he's not selling those, right? You do realize that he was just paid a fee to go on there and do that. And he has nothing to do with the Bibles. He has nothing to do with the sneakers. He's paid really? a fee to say oh, that. Wow. Well, who's making all the money then? Well, he gets a well, cut. He gets a, a yeah. He got a he, he got did. paid a fee. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I want much. him to get a lot of money. As either early birds uh, seven a.m. and the general is at ten a.m. He's okay. a billionaire. I'll, I'll be there after the general. I'll text money. I love it. And I love that Bible. 7 a.m. <laughs> oh, George. Uh, George, you mentioned uh, way back there you about uh, cutting a record. Um, how are you making out with that? Uh, every day working on it. Uh, I got a little side, uh, a little side thing going on where I had to kind of break away and prepare for, I'm going down to Los Angeles to, in about two weeks to play with some musician friends. Mm. Um, I how mean, like, literally, Oh, how we're long? just, I'm literally like dipping down there. We're playing and then I'm coming back the next day. It's only like oh. a one day thing. So, um, we just, it's a, an old band of mine that we haven't played together for 30 years. So that I've been preparing my, you know, I had to, you have to take apart your studio to kind of, mm play in a live situation kind of thing so mm. um but it'll be it's it's going and it will be uh oh, good right i'll be right back to it when i get back Are george, you gonna be in have, since we <laughs> have you here george yeah he's not going oh. to the manosphere uh does anyone have an order black cartridge did you upgrade from a red or blue was there a significant difference george are you able to take yeah. this question on I've had all three of those carts, and the black is uh, definitely the best one of them. Um, big difference. Uh, now, will that work on any turntable, or do you need a table that you can make really super fine adjustments to, or is that just for the bronze? It's a pretty – well, the bronze, they're all really kind of the same thing. Uh, well, a guy talked goes, me out of upgrading. He said uh, – back when I had my project, he said that table can't handle that cartridge. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, <clears throat> I had a Riga P2, uh, before the P3 and it, it handled it fine. Um, I don't know why he would say that, but, um, <clears throat> you wanted to sell me a turntable. <laughs> yeah, there That's you go. Why. I had the red, I had the blue, and then I got the black and it was a big, they're all the same shape. They're all the exact same. They look the same. The colors just different and the internals are different, but, um, the Orifon black is, I think the best moving magnet, uh, around really. Well, high praise indeed, George. Uh, can you put an order font on an audio technica? Technica, Tom Hagen. I did. I put it on. I put an order font on my son's uh, audio technica LP120. I did. I, no one's saying what they really should be saying here. Go ahead. The order font could bend in half. Order font. Mm. <laughs> the order font can bend in half. That's true. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Uh, Jim goes the two M black will fit on any uh, turntable. Thank you, Edward. Yeah, they'll, for being yeah, here. they'll fit. But the thing is, can you get the most benefit? The point this guy was making to me is, you're not going to get the maximum benefit from this cartridge on that turntable. And that was just you know it was a it was a five hundred dollar project turntable at the time. Mm. Projects and are I, okay. way I see what he's saying. Yeah, I see them in competition with Rega at the. P1 level with the project because the price point is very similar. But after that, the Rega starts pulling away from the project turntables pretty quickly. Yeah, I put that downstairs in my second have, system. They have fucking fishing line on it. Hey, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. I don't like those. That, <laughs> But it works. It's it not works. just a project, but I don't like that little fishing line counter. Why? Right Why? You gotta catch fish there. Because they sometimes you. I've had things, I had one here for a while downstairs that I was using, loaned, and, and you lift it off sometimes and you, it, it would snag on something. It wouldn't, and it's just, it's like a thing that doesn't need to be there. I think there's a better way to do that counter. Yeah, but sometimes my simpler point, is better. I'd rather pay <coughs> a hundred or $200 more and get one without it. That's my, for me, for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, love, I, I love my, oh, I, I love my Riga 
I love my Riga, but I really hate having to take the fucking turntable off and change the change the. Well, uh, you got to upgrade. You got to go higher as which, a Riga line. Oh, so you, you, you just that. get the new power. Uh, the power thing you can change. Yeah, yeah you can get that's, that's, that's the next upgrade I'm making to my turntable. Yeah, you can get that now. The it's a it's a butt. Like I have. Starting with you have to have six, a three though. You have to have a three or higher. Yeah, yeah. three or higher. You can get control. the uh, yeah. yeah board, and it, you can just push the forty-five and thirty-three. Well, well, what's the smarter move with the three to get the chrome spin wheel or to get the power thing? Well, I would say sound wise, the uh, the sub platter would be first. Sound wise, sub platter first for sound. Well, now, if you don't or, play forty well, fives a lot, it doesn't really matter, right? You know. Arguably, though, arguably though, the speed control gives you a more stable roll, which might even improve sound too. So, uh, I would, I you know, the speed control for convenience, uh, the sub platter, yeah, like him as he's saying, for maybe a little bit control? of tightness in base. How much is the think, speed control? I think it's like four hundred bucks, man. Fifty, no, maybe. I thought it was yeah, about but if you take more. all that money for upgrades and just initially yeah. put it into a high end table. Well, I would. I mean, to me, the bit, the best. It's just overall, based on your dollar. The best Riga, I think, overall for. I shouldn't say reasonable because what's reasonable to one but is what Rachel got. The P six is the best. Like has pretty much everything you would ever need. Uh, her, you have that with the. Um, What's it the yellow the, part? Yeah, yeah. It does. that is an incredible table. I mean, but it's or like if if you if you have a if you don't have the budget, what you can do, and Harry, this might be the reason why you get the P three, and then when you can, you can upgrade yeah. the sub platter, and then right, you yeah. can upgrade the speed control, step step. and then you end up yeah. with a P six eventually. Yeah, yeah. yeah that makes right. sense. Well, Nick, which is Nick, one of the selling points of the Rega line. Is Nick that, is absolutely yeah. right, but but he says not spending a ton of money, but with that cartridge, it is a two thousand dollar turntable. Hey, look! You know, I got my P3 oh, for a thousand bucks, so that's way yeah. under what it goes for. Yeah, that's a good deal. Right? P6 with P6. the exact two is is to me. If I said someone was going to buy a new turntable and they had a couple grand to spend, and it is a couple grand, but if you play records as much as a lot of us do, mm -hmm. that to me is just how many. You know, when do you, how yeah. much? Do you it's pay? a three thousand dollar proposition up here for. Well, that's Canada. Canada. That's true. Yeah. 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 Do any of these and do it's any cheaper of these, in the UK? It's cheaper in the UK. Do any uh, of these no, go ahead, David. do any of these high end players um have 78? No. <laughs> Rega, Rega doesn't. Because your cart wouldn't be able you'd destroy your cart on oh, a Yeah. No, it's just my dad. My, my dad was a jazz musician and he did about three three albums on 78, which I've got. And then, um, obviously, when he passed away, I mum just said, "Would you like Dad's record collection?" And there's a lot of '78s that I don't know who these people are, um, and and but I'd like to maybe digitize them and and stick them. Let me help yeah, you the, out. The, David. the they, LP. They all, the, they all sound the, like that. <laughs> hey. The LP120, I believe the LP120 will do 78 if you push back down the 33 and 45 at the same time. At least mine did. Wow. And then you can get an, a relatively inexpensive 78 cart because it's got the replaceable head shells, right? So you can you can put that on there. Yeah. If, if yeah. And, and, and they come with like a USB out. If you want to digitize them, it might be the, the easiest. Yeah, but you're not going to well, spoil what, what 78 do, what, what with the do, same George? Why huh? do, George? Yeah. Well, well, wouldn't I do, you George, have to I change put... the stylus though? I mean, wouldn't it ruin a, a, a good stylus to play a 78 with them? That's what well, I'm saying. You get a 78 cart that's relatively, you can you get some. Yeah. My, my old dual downstairs plays 78s, and I just have a grado on it. I don't have any 78s. Real, I, the only 78 I have is that last track on side one of Moby Grapes. Wow. Moby Grapes. Yeah, I got that too. That yeah, was the stupidest right. thing White, they did. Jack White did the same thing on <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the Lazar the Lazaretto. Yeah, Lazaretto. Okay, Dan, yeah. Dan has been very patient here in the peanut gallery. He's got a question. George, I'll go to you. Is it worth going from red to blue, or should he just go straight to the black or to fawn uh, cartridge? I'd go straight to back black if you can get it. What's the price it? difference? I don't even know. Probably about 500 bucks. I think a... The oh. blacks are going for almost a thousand now. I think. I think it's probably two hundred bucks every step. I would. Oh. I would reckon. George, have you played that Lazaretto record? Isn't there supposed to be a song yeah. on the label itself? Okay. Yeah. The so he How did everything. I have the album, but I can't see anything on there. It looks like a groove. It's 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 on the inside of the label. It's almost like you have to set. If you, I, I wouldn't do it because uh, yeah. it wants you to set your. 
it wants you to set your stylus down inside the label. And I was afraid to do that part, but all the other stuff works. He's got one yeah. side uh, starts with two different uh, grooves on right. the outside. So you don't know what the intro is going to be into the song. And then yeah. one side plays from inside to out. Uh, yeah. There's a hologram. And, and that one side's got the uh, high, high, uh, glossy 3D shit oh. coming up off the record tom yeah. yeah tom r absolutely can i get a high-end system for 10 you could get a great system for 10 grand i would probably oh, consider God. that um that p6 table that would be two or or maybe you can get a package deal with that you know mm -hmm. two thousand for the turntable maybe oh you could get a great system for under <laughs> Ten thousand dollars. Another question going to George. Uh, oh, Ray, if you had your druthers, Rega P two or Project Debut Carbon? I, I, I like the Riga aesthetic and I like the Riga philosophy. So, hey, I Riga, Riga. Riga. yeah, but the Riga doesn't have the fishing line. Well, the I early, think I think the young, the isn't the P one have fishing line? It might no, be. no, it does not. It doesn't. Hey Herkimer, how can you get a a, a P six for a thousand dollars? Where is that? Uh, Herkimer said you can get a P six for a thousand. From the how back, how can you get it for a thousand? Hey Rachel, is that a used truck. one? Ray, Rachel, I just got You're a text up. from Harry, and I'm troubled yeah. by it. Uh oh, what do we got? Let's deal with it. Can you call me? At <laughs> breathe <laughs> heavy. I'll pay. Oh, <laughs> Harry, what the hell is going on with you? Uh. Hey, uh, Tomato, it's uh, Sarah. Are you, it's wearing, Friday. Hey. Are you able to come on the TV show today? I'd love to talk yeah, to you. Yeah, we got some talking to you. Yeah, uh, we, yeah. yeah. You yeah got and Herkimer, <laughs> Herkimer, you can bypass you're, the cream. You're too. hanging with the wrong crowd. No, yeah. We want a word with you, darling. You know, <laughs> you, you, guys, you guys are talking about like $5,000 uh, um, record player and everything. I'm going like, oh, God. My, hey, mine's like not, two, mine's like 260 bucks <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what? It, it takes a long time to build up to, most people it takes a long time of upgrading and upgrading to build a system like that yeah i'm 67 matt harry I, I have five, time. you can get a u, <laughs> a u turn i think it's u turn that makes it a decent 500 or less turntable 400 dollars or something Okay, yeah, Needle Groovy wants. Hey, so, what could I get for five hundred bucks? Yeah, isn't the U-turn the one that's supposed to be pretty good for under five or four hundred? <laughs> hey, what's that Canadian company turntable? Uh, oh. oh man, oh, what's they, the Canadian? One? Like yeah. A lot turntable. of people get them. Yeah, I have no. a comment about the record store day. Okay, I go went on. into Silver Platters. Yeah. And I asked him specifically, I said, on that little miniature three-inch Beatles record player on records, are you going to get it? He goes, well, let me look. And he looks on his computer. He says, we're going to get six of them for all of our stores. Oh, wow. So that's going to be really hard to get. And I'm not getting up at one in the morning to go get in line for that. <clears throat> Yeah, it's uh, Carl and uh, the gang are correct. It's the fluences the Canadian oh, make. People seem to be happy with those. Yeah, people like them. They're good. They're a workhorse. Uh, Sarah, you're, 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 about three hours sleep. Me too, Sarah. Me too. <laughs> kidding, and I'm in England. Jeez, yeah. I went to bed at seven thirty this morning. Yeah, it's it's fun. Gear is fun, you know. To, tweaking uh, your uh, stereo system, trying to. Uh, Nudge every uh, last bit of uh, last bit of performance out of it. it. It's a lot of fun to upgrade and, and try different cartridges if you have the luxury of doing so. And then uh, you know expands your horizon, lets you understand maybe a bit more what you kind of sound you like. Well, that when I got that tube amp, it changed everything. Not yeah, that isn't that something exactly right? Did you get your tubes tied? Well, send me a text about it, Harry, and I'll let you know. Yeah, I will. Yeah, right <laughs> away. Uh, Sarah, with a huge endorsement. George, you are a firecracker on her show last night. You know, I think Sarah's she's gentle to this us old assholes. Yeah, here yeah. Because because we're not assholes compared to the young assholes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, speak, speak, for, speak for yourself, Mazzy. I'm pretty much no, an asshole. No. Rachel, uh, Rachel, I think David's probably the youngest guy on this panel. Am I? 56 i'm yep. nearly 57 yeah you're uh, i i am so in yeah. your face all right no. how old are you rob i am 
I'm going to be uh, older in about a, a month. He's 55 or 56. Anyway, wow. David, you were, trying, you, were trying, you were attempting to say. Uh, go no, ahead. I've, I've, got a, I've got a little gift for you, Rachel. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I'll send you some sort of VCLT or whatever you call it. Um, but uh, this was, I was going, I've been tidying up in the studio oh, and yeah. I went through this box of stuff and I found something that I found at Abbey Road when I was at last at Abbey Road. And I thought I'll, I'll gift it to you because, and, and I, it was a cross between you and Mazzy maybe, but Mazzy doesn't play guitar. You've got guitars, but I, I found- play guitar. Mazzy's well, not good. I don't play well, but I play guitar. I play better than Mazzy. Oh, the drummer right. was my, I, I started drums. That was my friend yeah. who died when I moved here. His wife gave me his drum set. Right. We played in junior yeah, don't quit your day job. I, okay, well, I'm know. still I'm still going for Rachel on <laughs> yeah, this one. Yeah, give it to Rachel. Because she's, she's the boss. But what is it? So, yeah. um, uh, what it is, is I found this on the mixing console, and All it's right. a it's a Beatles pick. Oh, oh. From um, Abbey Road, isn't says, that something? Rubber. Rubber. Oh, that oh, is, plastic soul, I love that. That plastic is great. Soul. So I'll get that to you somehow. Uh, Sarah, with one of the greatest comments you're ever going to get on this channel, you're my favorite assholes. Yeah, <laughs> we're winking. So that, that is absolutely adorable. I like that uh, endorsement from from Sarah. Yeah, that's very nice. Oh, what he got? Hold on, Harry's got something here. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Apple. If I can get it to focus, you got Apple. It's, yeah, Apple. It's just Apple. Awesome. Yeah, you know, it, you're used to holding something that small, right, Harry? Hey, oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I knew that was. I knew that was on the way. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, it's hey, a guy down here. Yeah, Wax. Do you missed something when I was on? You know, when I was on when I came out of hospital, and and I I'd had this biopsy thing taken out of my right arm. How did you miss the right arm jokes? How did I, I was waiting. I was waiting. I was saying, yeah, I can't really use no, my right arm at the moment. And I was thinking, come on, waxed. Come it's on. Because, it's because I felt sorry for you. Thank you. Thank you. I had a hole in my arm. That's good. Here's a, here's another guy that knows a lot about gear. Harman Kardon Citation Preamp, Citation uh, 5 Amp, Vintage Tube stuff works really well. Or Acoustat 120 Solid State Townsend Allegri, Allegri Preamp. I even have a Deckware Integrated SCT. I'd consider. So a lot of gear there. Elliot Cruz coming in with the dual 1219 professionally rebuilt can be had for 800 bucks or so. Uh, you can pick one up for 200, 400. I spent a hundred to 200 and uh, get her up and running. All right. Massey's got him. Is that Lucy? That, I love that strat. You got George Harrison pick. Fend up. No, All right. I sold, I sold um, uh, the um, Rocky. Rocky, you did. Wow, I did. Yeah, good for you. I got twice what I paid for it. All right, well, nice, nice now, bar that to be Lucy? Nice bar cord. This is a uh, 1992 American Strat, mm. it's a beautiful color. I've always admired that. Yeah, Michelle uh, gave me this yeah. for Christmas one year. Nice, yeah, it, it's a gorgeous instrument, Mouse. You know what I hate about playing guitar is changing the strings. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's why man, you have a, that's why we need roadies. Yeah, I, exactly. I was going to say I was going to say Harry. I I, I obviously guitar when um, oh when I haven't got the um uh -oh, Fender. Here we go. It's a Hello nice. Kitty. It's pink. I've done, a, I've done a lot of guitar teching for uh, that thing's been around the block of the, Now is that uh, how do you put it? Uh, custom shop? Is it uh, weather? Yeah. You know, it, it, it's uh yeah, it's custom shop. Yeah. But nice, you know, those custom shops and the Les Paul, if you get a custom Les Paul with the diamond headstock and gorgeous looking things. When uh, when Ed Hamill comes out to, on tour here, I always have not changed my strings. <clears throat> uh, well, wait for Massey to get back. We'll ask him if he's got the rose. That's the George Harrison Telecaster. Hey, Gary, is that on your guitar? Yeah, yeah Rob. So, George, for pedal, for your pedal array, how many pedals uh, about do you have at your uh, disposal there? And are you a pedal guy? Uh, not everybody is. Cool. Right oh, now on the board, that's what we got. All right, let's. Uh, okay, so you got. Uh, I uh, you know I always look for boss pedals. Uh, you got the uh, tube screamer. Yeah. Looks like down there. Yeah. So oh, uh, this the, is. I got a, the same Fox issue. George, how much Vox. money is sitting there on that board? 
Oh, well, this this is the uh, kind of the cheap stuff. I got way more up there, but this because I got to hit, I got to step on this stuff. So, yeah, uh, Vox volume, a lot of money, I guess. A mini wah pedal that's a, a full size crybaby jammed into a small thing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> tuner. This thing called the freak out will give you controlled feedback at a certain harmonic. Uh, this is just an expression pedal for this uh, MXR. Uh, poly blue octave which does uh multiple octave stuff and fuzz and stuff that's a strymon uh univibe uh, oh, that's okay. a, yeah a swollen pickle fuzz tube screamer into a wampler gearbox that has a like a tumness which is a uh like a clon in one side yeah. and kind of a hot rodded marshall sound and then uh phase 95 which has the phase 45 and 90 in it and then a uh, Corona chorus, which is I've got that print. Corona chorus, yeah. Where's Pete Thal? He's really into this. Stuff. <laughs> and then, uh, and then an analog delay called a Carbon Copy, um, yeah. and then a uh, Boss just reverb generator. Okay, so George, one thing I'm noticing right away about your setup. So am I. Yeah. I reckon George. George, I wish you'd pointed to that swollen pickle last night. And <laughs> yeah, I should have. It would have. It would have went perfect. So what I noticed yeah. right away, George, is when you do yours, you've got yeah. uh, custom uh, uh, knobs on there for uh, stomp pedals to put over. Yeah, you you can just buy them um, at Amazon, and they're just these little uh, like uh, plastic covers yeah. that you you stick on there and it just makes it easier to step wow. on it when you're old are they about the size of sort of volume tone knobs sort of thing yeah like almost exactly it looks like you have a bunch of clear oh, uh, yeah. uh, patrick's go quick hide the pedals everybody Patrick's no. just showed up. <laughs> all right let's take a look at the telecaster george harrison <laughs> Wow. Nice, Mazzy. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. That is, yeah. If they uh, signature this is the rosewood, this is chambered, so it's not as heavy as the original. Harrison one was like a block, was twice the weight or something. On yeah, the that's been polished, Mazzy. Do you shave in that? Do you shave in that? Black <laughs> I don't yeah. polish my guitars. I just I keep I keep these in the case. I don't keep these out. Like my I keep my Strat out because yeah. I play that one. My philosophy is: you keep them in a case, you'll never play them. So well, there's but I keep I keep. Uh, Two it's electrics true. and one acoustic out, but the and I have like three other guitars, but I sold two recently because I don't need All right, them. Let's hold on. Let's go first go to Harry and then we'll go over to oh, George. Nice. So that's a sweet little that's, that's nice. This is a T3B. You got humbuckers on there, Bixby uh, vibrato. I keep you know I keep my guitars on a stand where I can grab them because if you do that you tend to play them. That's my philosophy. And then I got a little I got my amp down here. Hang on. Where I can, where yeah, it's behind oh, the yeah. chair there. Yeah, you got a couple. If you got two amps or just the one, just the one. Okay. But yeah, you're right. If you keep them right where you can grab them, you'll play. And you're going to play them. You'll pull them off the wall and play them. Go ahead. What do we got? Les Paul. That's uh, Les Paul. It's a flamey top. And you got what do they call those? Uh, uh, like speed knobs. I think those are called speed knobs on there. Yeah, I had to put them on. It's too hard to do language ones. to yourself. <laughs> I, I just put the speed knobs on because it was too hard to reach down yeah. and just, you know, and crank it real fast. The yeah. ones don't work. For yeah. Everybody. I like those. And uh, also, uh, so is this a standard or what model yeah. is that? It? It's a, it's a standard. Uh, it was custom built for Sweetwater. They like a, an exclusive that they had. Okay. So it's like 50 specs, got a pretty chunky neck on it, like a 59 yeah. chunky neck on it. So I like the speed knobs myself, actually, which hats are nice. Too. Okay. Oh, hold on. Let's see what we got here with Johnny. Okay, now Johnny, this is you got uh, Les Paul. On there. Um, but it's uh, an Epiphone. It's not. Uh, oh yeah, Epiphone but that's all right. Epiphone a good guitar. Yeah. Do you know what I love, Johnny? It's when you look at the first uh, Oasis video with Supersonic. They're on the roof. You've got uh, Noel Gallagher playing a an Epiphone. He's playing an Epiphone mm -hmm. Les Paul because he didn't have the money for the uh, yeah. for the Wilson. Okay, yeah. let's let's take a look. Oh, look at those white look at that. Oh. There. These nice. Are the These are the white ones. Yeah, custom shop. Look at that. These my are all favorite. custom kits. It's my Ooh. favorite. And then this is the stage. This is the stage guitar that I've used most of the time. Yeah. This one is that heavy. <laughs> Like he's, got, he's got even plugged hey, David. You got the damn thing. <laughs> Holy shit, that sounded good. Yes, I've been moving. 
Okay, Loki's got a question for Johnny. Johnny, can you uh, answer this question for everybody? You want to read the question and answer it? Okay. <clears throat> Rachel, please, please, can you ask Johnny if he has a swollen <laughs> pickle with a turkey neck? All right. What the hell is that? Well, that's, your, a, that's your sound system. Okay, oh, here's the okay. Rick. I, I, was, I have a pickle, but it's not. Okay. Uh, now, this John Lennon, uh, it was a 326. Three, uh, 355. That's a nice guitar. Oh, well, it, this is what I'm selling too. So. Uh, see, I, had, I had a 12 string version um, of that. I'm asking 32. I'll take three cash. I gave you 20, right? 25 right now. Nope. Gonna represent the SG too. Twenty-eight. Nice, very nice. Right now yeah. is yours. Wow. With a case. That's a nice guitar. And they're collectible. Yeah. They can go for as much as five thousand dollars. No, you're there's different. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Okay, George. Yeah, it's weird as is. It's weird as the length of these. Wow, it's, nice. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, SG. Like that. There you go. The Spanish guitar. Les Paul Hayden. Them didn't want his name on it. Yeah. You see that guitar, and you just right away think of ACDC. Don't you know how iconic. Les Paul actually is on the back. There's a little hologram of Les Paul on the back, yeah. that little sticker. Did he have the last that? picture? <laughs> What's the last photo that they took of him? What's the last he got... photo ever taken of Les Paul? Yeah, and all the all the 2015 models, uh, they they it was the hundred year thing. So he had signed a, he, he his signature is on all the headstocks. Okay. They also came with these stupid robot tuners, which are changed out now. Yeah, those funny. things were a major disaster. Hey, I have a question about speakers. Okay, because I upgraded, I had a couple of friends come over and we did some A B stuff, but both of them said they liked the sound of the speakers with the grills off. Can the grills really make a difference? It can, but not probably not a lot. It depends. Not I like them off too. I don't like grills on speakers. Mm. Yeah. Grill I'll take, off. Them, I'll take them off in the studio. Yeah, and I take I take them off even they in the can, home environment. They can make every little thing can make a slight difference, you know. See, I, mm. I take the grills. I, I like the look of the uh, uh, speakers. I'm gonna sell my tower uh, clips after I got the other ones. So Anybody we used to actually uh, we used to actually tape uh, <laughs> tissue paper over the tweeters of NS10s in the recording studio when we were mixing. Wow. Used to be a common thing. Uh, what makes them collectible? Well, the one that, uh, yeah, you should get up here too, David. Talk good guitars with us, man. Come on up. Well, we uh, we love uh, promoting you and all your efforts. Uh, David Pedrosha, first boy on the moon, folks. Uh, his latest album, Cyber Girl. You should pick up a copy. Do yourself some favor. You won't regret it. And in fact, I think it was Mark. Mark uh, Miller has just done a review yeah. of uh first boy on the moon mark, uh, mark morris mark morris yes um i bought mine without grills for sound reasons says ks so uh your mileage will uh vary uh to okay. Paul's, uh paul mccartney less paul uh picture of mccartney there with what he's got but yeah i mean there's so many great instruments so what makes them collectible is they're limited so the one that mazzy showed with the uh, rickenbacker it's called a John Lennon Signature Edition. They only made a thousand, two thousand, or something like that, and uh, they've got uh, John's uh, uh, laser, you know, printed autograph on there, and an mm -hmm. image of John himself. Very limited, wow. and the Rickenbacker themselves. That company does not produce a lot of um, guitars. They used to produce them like. Uh, Gibson and Fender, but now Rickenbacker have a very limited schedule, and you can wait up to five years for your guitar to be manufactured from Rickenbacker if you order one. You also All notice right. that the, the retailers won't list the prices of Rickenbackers. Like if they have a catalog, they don't yeah. put the price uh, in the catalog. Like in uh, Canada, <laughs> I think they start at about five thousand yeah, dollars. They don't want you. To, they don't Rickenbacker. want you to have a stroke when you see the price. Rickenbacker. <laughs> Rickenbacker. Rickenbacker primarily makes basses, right? No. Oh no, they make uh, guitars too. All but the, the bass that all the twelve strings. They were famous for the twelve strings. Oh, what about the? I thought they were more no. famous for their. But yeah, yeah. Wax, Wax, has, Wax has got a point there because Glenn Matlock yeah. still got his Rickenbacker from yeah. uh, the yeah. the nineteen. But the George Harrison Hard Day's Night, the Birds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. For, for, it was for a few years. Show there. That's the John Sullivan. 
for for a few years, about three people played a Rickenbacker twelve string Mazzy. We got it, but the four thousand one bass was played by a lot. Lemmy played a Rickenbacker. Yeah, I was going to say that I the waxed is is kind of more on when I was growing up. I thought Rickenbackers were mainly basses because of Steve. Well, my Priest. Bro, my well you young people are like that, but old veterans will tell you the real story. My yeah, the holy grail. Well, Frank, that yeah, that black guitar was a Rickenbacker. Um, but there, the Rick Twelve was that jingly. All the jingle jangle music is based mm. on Rickenbacker stuff. Yeah, mm. my hey, holy David. grail of a guitar would be a white falcon. David, how you That's doing? White falcon. Let's put uh, let's put the, these rock and rollers there with the producer. We'll put their producer here. Put David, the guitar player. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, hold on, I need to yell at someone because it hasn't happened in a bit. All right, <laughs> Frank. Frank, I know he showed one. I'm just saying. I had two older brothers who were musicians, and I always thought they were more known as a bass company than a guitar company. That's all. Yeah, no, yeah, they, think, were, they, they were equally that. both. They were equally both. Go ahead, Harry. Oh, Herkimer's asking me what speakers I got. I got the Klipsch Chorus Twos. God, those are beautiful. Those are uh, big and bountiful. Who did you steal those, nice. from, Harry? And you know, a guy seven years ago, really seven years ago, I went to a garage sale and I, I always ask, do you have records? He says, yeah, I do, but I'm not going to sell them. So I gave him my card and I said, if you change your mind, call me. He called me seven years later and said, I'm ready to sell. And he had these speakers mm. and some gear. So I ended up buying the speakers and I didn't buy any of his records because they were all mm. kind of beat. White Falcon from the Gresh, uh, the good people at Gresh. That's I want one of those. Great. Yeah, my I got a picture of my son playing one from a fellow named Lauren Green, not from Bonanza, but he was in a band called the. I Outlaw bet she always band. says that too when he meets people. I'm not that Lauren Green. Yeah, I know. Well, this is the whole thing, right? And it's spelled. Bingo. And if anyone Bingo. asks him that Lauren Green, they're a moron. He's dead, and he's very. He lay face down on the desert sand, clutching a six gun from his hand. From up top, I thought he was dead. Yeah, I got a, a, I got an Apple phone, so John Lennon signature, uh, uh, J120, 160. Uh, okay, we got trouble in paradise here, Richie. Uh, all, yes, you're all the time yes. because of your new hairdo. <laughs> Uh, you're trying to reinvent classic rock and roll with your duck Hello, tail. Richie. Hello, David. <clears throat> Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Good looking. Hey, Johnny. I, I'm fine. Uh, I just came on here to ask Mazzy a question, but before I do that, yes. Um, before the Beatles and you before the me. bird, you can text me. Um, the reason I came here is because you don't answer my text anymore. But well, when uh, you send me Biden yeah, falling right. up a uh, stairway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Richie, go ahead. So before the Beatles, before the birds, yes, go ahead. It was Buck Owens that had the Rickenbacker sound. Yeah, that's that's true. You're right. See, mm. uh, yeah. The legend Baker. of Bakersfield, uh, Bakersfield, California, obviously. Bakersfield. This is where. This is but where obviously, it. George Harrison and the Hard Day's Night made them sell a shitload of guitars. Oh yeah, yeah. And the Rickenbacker, uh, the Rickenbacker bass became sort of the Beatles kind of stopped playing Rickenbacker guitars about Revolver, uh, and Paul's bass took over, and that Rickenbacker bass is the like the the big sound on the yeah. Yeah. Albums so after that. On Pepper and uh, Magical Mystery and uh, going forward. It's good to see you here, Richie. I just don't answer when you se you send me this like these weird little. <laughs> that, that's not true. Are you, right. guys, are you guys going to do another movie thing? Because that was great. Yeah, that we DVD will. movie thing. That was brilliant. I was team Richie all the way, I'm afraid, Mazzy. But I, I, it's not a competition. No, no, yeah. I know, I know. But it was great. I, Vinyl Richie's selection was who, kind of. Who, who is this English guy? I, I like his hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's our good friend David Donnelly. Uh, he's played with uh, Spiders from Mars. Uh, perhaps you've heard of them. Richie with David Bowie fame. Uh, Tony Visconti, Woody Woodmansey, et cetera, et cetera. He's got, looks like he's got an autograph. Nice. Him. Very nice. I'm, I mentioned in Woody Woodmansey's autobiography. Oh, now I was, that would be a book I would be, that would be very well worth reading. Uh, famously getting fired by Bowie. On his uh, wedding when, day. Yeah. Just like, oh, was it his wedding day? oh my God. Oh, no. Yeah. It was horrible. I mean, it's from bad to worse to bad. David Pedrosha, welcome to the program as well. Uh, what's your favorite uh, guitar to sling along? And we'll let Richie get his question in too. But let's go to you and your guitar first. Do you prefer a Les Pauls or uh, what? Who's the guy that's there? Uh, uh, God, Jay. Uh, uh, who's the guy, the new guy with the birds all over the neck? Those things. 
Oh, Paul Reed Smith. Paul Reed Smith guitar has really taken the place of Fenders in a lot of instances. Uh, I'm saying, but wh where do you go, David? Are you Fender or Gibson? Where's your loyalty lie with guitar? Let, Les Paul, Gib Gibson, Les Paul, uh, Mick Ronson, oh, Jimmy wow. Page. There you go, Mick Ronson. Those the white, white Les Paul. Holy smoke, those white ones look amazing. Though. You know, you we That's do cool. have to wish this guitar a happy 70th birthday. 70 years. I'm as old as a Stratocaster guitar. Yeah. I will be. I, I think it's six months older than me. But this literally just turned 70 uh, this past month. Yeah. Isn't it true? Yeah. Isn't it true that Leo Fender does didn't play guitar? Yes. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, he, but he was, he was a he was a tech guy, right? He was yeah, a speaker yeah. guy. Weird, though, it? Yeah, he was just. Well, uh, I don't play guitar either. <laughs> you, hey, play. Vinyl, you play. Vinyl yeah. Richie. Nice to meet you. Uh, thanks for plugging my band, the Put Ons. Uh, I was you had an episode and you were showing the the seven inches uh, that Steve. Yeah, that Steve. So you're the one that sent them to Steve. Yeah, I always I send lots of stuff to Steve. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, and anyway, I, I uh, had him send them to you because uh, you were talking about uh, puke and vomit records or something, and my band was on that label. Yeah, I you know after I've listened to him a few times since, and I don't know if I really did him justice on my video. I, hey, I really are you, like it. Are you from Downey? I lived in Downey for like twenty years. Oh, I'm from originally. I'm from Borna Park, so oh, okay. That's why I thought maybe we might know the same. Not same, not Berry Farm, right? And you were talking about uh, Club Lingerie, and I used to hang yeah. out there in the early '80s. So I thought uh, maybe we. Yeah. We, there we got that right. Richie was simply talking about lingerie. He has it <coughs> outside I'm, the kind of community. I'm Make sure you're giving us all a thumbs up. Watch, and we got some big talent on the show, including. <laughs> Vinyl Richie, George Borden, David Donnelly, David Pedroza, joining the regular cast of uh, of nonsense here. But uh, the nonsense is greatly appreciated. Yeah, Club this Lingerie album is from Downey to Lubbock. Club Lingerie was a great club. Oh, Steve Alvin, yeah. Nice, uh, nice album cover there. I like, I like all. Yeah, the, this is uh, um, John. Uh, who is it, John? Jimmy Dale Damore. Uh, Jimmy yeah, but the artwork is done by um, the, the guy from was he in the Macons? John, anybody know? John, who? That's what we I'm trying to figure out. out. Harry, like everything else, we don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, Paul McCartney's solo, too many people. That's a great, that's a B side to Uncle Albert. Uh, what I, guitar yeah. was he playing on that 45? I, I don't, I, I don't. Like, I don't I think there's pictures of McCartney, I think, playing a Jaguar uh, uh, on the cover. But I don't think it was McCartney that did that solo. I thought it was somebody uh, like David, David Spinoza, Spinoza or somebody like that. Yeah, I think it was David Spinoza. Hey, uh, Stephen Schnee has an answer for you, Harry. Yes, John Langford, Stephen. Final Richie. Here, Harry, really of, Richie, are you noticing women are taking a renewed interest in you as you go about getting groceries and like with your new hairstyle? Well, the one woman that counts yeah. hates it. Okay, why now? Why doesn't she like it? You, it's she, taking years off you. You look like you're twenty. You look like a beatnik. Yeah, that's not the look I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did you have before an afro or something? Or? Yeah, he just was. Have you like, ever considered sure, shaving like, your head? I let's put it this way: I haven't owned a comb since the 1980s. You know. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've always kept my hair real short. Come on up, I Sarah. Think it suits, I think it hair. suits him. I think that hair could suit him. Yeah, yeah but I, I wanted think. to ask, before I leave, I wanted to ask Mazzy a question. Yeah, no. um, what made you start making videos on YouTube? Um, this has been asked. Have, uh, I saw that guy, and I always forget his name, the guy in Germany who's not around anymore, not, not Michael. Michael, um, audio audio, audio laws. Well, audio something. Audio, audio laws. Audio, laws. Yeah. audio file audio laws. laws. Right. Who audio file jazz. laws. He was yeah. kind of a quirky, uh, big yeah. guy, and he showed jazz, and he just was seemed really nice, and would show these great collections, and I, I thought, you know, I could do that, and it was all downhill from there. No, okay. but I just and I just started. I made one video, an introduction video, 
And then I didn't make my second video for, until a year later. Like literally, wow. I just kind of got yeah. busy with work. And then a year later, I forgot what happened and I just started again. So, no, but then I started, I, you're one of the people I started seeing. And um, okay, because I, I was recently accused of being the reason you're making YouTube videos. And I'm going, oh my God, I hope I didn't no, put but this I under the world. Not, I did this early on. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's funny how it's, I like Vinyl Richie and I always, I kind of tease that. He, he, I'm lowering his. Uh, I'm going to move you up by him. I'm so lowering that his. Very intimate his located. By him liking me and hanging out with me and uh, doing videos, joint videos, I'm lowering his street cred because all the kind of the cool kids and the and the yes. punks and the, you know, like Vinyl Richie. And I think I'm like the mass market guy. So uh, I'm lowering yeah. his. Street you cred. know. I, I don't really worry about that stuff because I you, you get it from you know. both sides, you know. You do, hey, you do. I, I'm gonna get it for coming on here, you know, from certain. Whoa, 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 and, whoa. and you know, it's shit. it's whoa. It's a, Who's gonna give you shit for coming on here? The same. Well, oh, there's five, always somebody out there. The same five people that Rob's always complaining about. Same, you know? <laughs> trigger, that's all you're worried about. Hey. No, I'm not worried hey. about. It. I'm just saying, I it does whatever. Uh, it well, does well, happen. He's right. I have it a question happen. for you. I have a question for George Borden. Is, right. this kind of, is this the kind of lame man love that was going on the tomato show? Oh no, 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 no. This is a no, <laughs> no, man. It was a, it was near violent. <laughs> it was, it was really sad, man. Really sad. Oh, because I think the, the I think uh, on what are here you the, talking about? The, 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 the real men are on here. So it's not like that. I don't think. To be I, don't know. I just, you know, that's me for yourself. The real, the, the real sort of. Um, the, the real sort of kind of bad guys, if you like, on the stream last night, I always, I can't help thinking that they go back to their bedrooms and sit on the edge of their beds in their black rooms, just knocking one out, using their own tears as lubricant. You know, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, David, hold on, David Donnelly. You described me. That was, me. <laughs> that was very detailed. <laughs> that was, uh, Do, that. Does this guy That's have a camera in my bedroom or what? <laughs> <laughs> Talking from personal experience, Brian <laughs> Richie. You know, up to a certain point in your description, David, that was me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just quietly sobbing. <laughs> we had David with us. Let's talk about the album just a little bit. Uh, David, how are sales going for you? I hope uh, this thing is finding its way uh, into the hands of some people. It, it is totally available on Bandcamp, which uh, it, I will do. And can I ask a question real quick? Yeah, go ahead, Richard. Is this ahead, the dude Darren. that made the album with the astronaut guy on the cover? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. oh, you mean you mean this one, the boy? Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah. I, I I've heard Steve talk about that. Yeah, Steve. Oh, okay. And you know what? I think they have a copy of that at a Going Underground. I'll, I'll pick it up. Hey, thanks to you, thanks to Rachel, thanks to Steve, and thanks to Norman. I sold copies because you guys are promoting it, helping me push it. But the sales are kind of slowing down, so that's why I've. I'm well, coming back. Let's let's Try. give it a kick. You get you know. <laughs> is it on Bandcamp? Yeah, he's on Bandcamp. You're okay. gonna you're gonna compete with Beyonce today. Sorry. Yeah, but I want to get the imagery yeah. and get the whole so picture. So let's get some. Uh, buy it. There's a link in the thing. Buy it right now. Go buy this fucker. Don't what day? What day does Bandcamp give all the money to David? It's on Fridays. Like once a month. Not every yeah. once a month. Fridays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's every occasional Friday. And people will forget, so just go buy it now. Just go buy it, you know? Yeah, I'll do that. Don't I'll send sell, alimony. Sell don't send right child joking. support. Buy a but fucking thank record. You for, thank you for dropping the link. Here's the link where you can go. I'm just going to show you. Um, it looks great. The, the imagery on this thing is uh, top tier, the design. Uh, David does uh, design as well. Uh, folks, this is a good uh, album. Yeah, Excellent. please. David, who's the model in that picture? There you go. What? That, that's Jean Shrimpton. Jean Shrimpton. She's a famous yeah. model. Yeah. Wow. I was going to say she's beautiful. Whoever Clockwork, was. Uh, Clockwork uh, Orange there, obviously. Malcolm McDowell. But uh, here's uh, here's the page. First boy on the moon. Look at this graphic. I just love this stuff. Mm. And it's a great sounding. I did a, uh, a room tour video that's doing pretty good for me. And as room tours generally do. But I chose... 
uh, David's uh, music to highlight and accompany the video, and it worked out very well. And uh, please get over there, consider supporting David Berdrosha, first boy on the moon. Christopher, I'm kidding. Here's what the album looks like. Okay, Thanks, hold Johnny. On. Hold on, there we go. Nice. Yeah, it's gorgeous red. Nice. Now, Clean, uh, violent, very quiet. David, are you influenced yep. by the Smiths using cover stars with their album covers a little bit? Would yeah, all that stuff. All yeah. that. The, the British, the early 80s. I loved everything. Yeah. And um, I just want to mention that I also have our first 7-inch. I just added it today to Bandcamp. Okay. It's called Sophia. And I restocked. Lauren Bacall. Lauren Bacall. That's Lauren Bacall, yeah. And uh, I, rest I, I restocked the um, the first oh the we first got album the, the vinyl you got on vinyl again. Yeah, so it's 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 the same pressing. I just got it out of storage. Okay. Uh, I put everything right. away when the when the sales went slow, and now now that I have some downtime, I. I pushing it again so thank That's you guys for helping album. oh man uh, drown it out the song drown it out is so <clears throat> good that i love that's the for me david that's the hit off that album i just love that tune it's so good and i play i still go back and play that damn thing over and over it's just kind of my, my favorite but uh david pedro's your first one on the moon get involved there's massey wow. representing with both albums and both of them very striking as you can see graphically visually they really stand out you can see here's the the maslovian flip thank you sir <laughs> I, I had a lot of fun putting it together you know what's great about that second album the most recent one cyber girl is uh david so very kind to uh, give a big shout out to the vinyl community and uh, myself and Steve Carlson by name on there. Uh, David, very generous of you and uh, obviously humbled by that uh, gesture on your part. Uh, yeah, first one on the moon, Jesus, good Friday today. Okay. <laughs> this, Rachel, this can you explain to Sarah what a room tour was, is? Was he please? part of the 27 Club or he lived to be 30, right? 30 something. Uh, room tour. I'll. Uh, do you want to drop a link into ours? He's still alive. And uh, <laughs> so, Sarah, room we'll tour. Phone you, Jesus. It's going to go to our channel, and all you have to do is go to my place, just write room tour, and boom, she'll get it. Yeah, but, well, uh, explain what idea, it is. Yeah, well, I'm getting to that. So, uh, but I wanted to promote the, the thing. I, I could do a real quick room tour right now. Yeah, room tour, Sarah, in essence, is basically because we're in this quote vinyl community. We're all collecting records and we all have different stereo setups. So people get curious, hey, what are you rocking? You know, what do you got in your collection? Well, I I collect this, I collect that, and the other thing. Yeah. And so it's an excuse basically to show off the goods. It's like an episode <coughs> of HD HD TV. You see yeah. like your shelving, your stereo, your yeah. like Gary, walls. Gary's doing I, an impromptu room tour right now. <laughs> uh, there we go. There you go. So you look around, you see, oh, okay, it gives you an idea. Wow. It's when you're when these people are on the screen nice. or, or if they're showing their records and talking about an album, you don't get a chance to see the full layout of the land, so to speak. And so the advantage yeah, like, of all that. Sarah, I yeah, just, check that out. I'm very proud of that video I did. It's uh kind of gives you a more intimate look of what's going on around here. And then we'll go to Johnny who's working very hard to get I just I just uh moved Johnny, stuff you're on fire. Here. This your, this, your ghost this is going to burn here. up. Get it out of the house and, quick. And that was over there. So Do they not have real fire in Canada? Do they not have real fire in Canada? That's and that's my uh, <laughs> that's my my teardrop speaker over here. What's that? Nineteen fifty-seven teardrop, and my uh, um, the uh, jukebox, little jukebox for the table and stuff like that. Be very yeah, nice, stuff around Johnny. A bit. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, uh, I, I, oh. I have a 1970s, I think I bought it in 72 Pioneer turntable. I still, that's what I still use. I've had a few, but that's the one I, I'm sticking with. I just bought a, it's like a DJ needle, probably $80. I have a, my amp, a Pioneer amp that I paid like 50 bucks for. And I have some JBL speakers that I paid like $60 for. That's what Very I nice. rock. Very nice on the JBL. Uh, Dean Baker with a comment. I just bought two albums from First Boy on the Moon through Bandcamp. So thank Woo! you. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. 
Wow, this this guy's easily amused. Come I'm going to go. More. Richie, I'm, thank you for your yeah. appearance. Hey, I'm gonna, hey, Richie, take easy. I'm, nice to meet yeah. you. I'm going to go to Bandcamp, and I'm going to order one of those records. All take right. care. Bye, thank Richie. you. Thanks, Bye, Richie. Hey, Richie. Uh, Vinyl Richie, ladies and gentlemen. Always a pleasure Robert. to have him on board. Uh, okay, and Massey, how often do you pick up your guitar? Because you got it out. Uh, so how often do you? Do you I leave. I have the three guitars downstairs out. You know, unfortunately, not enough. Like maybe yeah. once every two weeks. You know, I should do it like every day. And I. It's so easy, you know. But we're, 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 we're hard. Hard. I mean, that's why I've been selling some guitars. Practice. I'm one of those. I'm one of those typical assholes that musicians hate. Where I ha I had a handful of nice guitars and I hardly can play them, so I don't deserve to have them. So I'm selling them off. So, <laughs> uh, well, how many are you going to end up keeping? Do you think? Um, I'll keep one. I'll, well, I actually I have um, the Texan, the acoustic. I'll keep that. The Epiphone Texan. I'll, yeah. I got to keep the Strat because Michelle gave it to me, and, I'll, and I Michelle love this. Kill you. And mm -hmm. I'm going to keep the um, the Telly because I love that Rosewood Telly. Now I have a Johnny Marr uh, Jaguar. I'm going to keep it for now, mm -hmm. but um, and it's a beautiful guitar. That's the thing. It's hard. I'm selling the the Rickenbacker, but I already sold the Rickenbacker 12 because I mean that's you know it's a great guitar, but and I got. That's it's so huge like money. It. Those things go for big bucks. Those yeah. twelve strings. The Rickenbacker and the George Harrison uh, Rocky sold like in a day. Yeah. And you're thinking of selling the John Lennon signature? Yeah, I, I put it up on Reverb, and we'll see what happens. You know. Oh, it'll sell. I'd rather sell it to someone I know, local. You know, but like if Harry oh. wants to buy it. Or yeah, twenty eight hundred is a bottom a bottom I dollar. A lot of I, you know, it depends. Twenty eight hundred dollars you know. though. Yeah, it, it that that's probably the low side of what they are on Reverb. Yeah, but you know, I could pick it, work out some because I don't have to pay. I I don't have to pay a cut if yeah. I sell. And you got the you got the case with it that came with the beautiful. It's got a uh, case. You know, you know, I can't find. There was a certificate that came with it, and I put it in a book when I packed <clears> up the move, and I fucking oh, can't it doesn't find have it. the certificate. Never mind. Yeah. I know, hey, Mazzy. If you're gonna sell a used guitar on Reverb right now, you should do it as soon as possible because it's kind of tanking right now. Now it what's is. going on? Tell What's's us about Reverb. Part? Used, guitars. used guitar sales aren't doing uh, good right now. Well, it's up there. And, if it uh, sells, fine. If it doesn't sell, yeah. I mean, I don't have to sell it. But okay, like, why are not? Why the, aren't? What's going on with the industry? Why are you during COVID? Selling? Everybody yeah. bought a guitar during COVID, and no. now they're starting to get rid of them. They don't play. Yeah, yeah. dumping them. There's a, there's a few good videos on YouTube. Joey, I'm going to keep the Johnny okay, so, like what, so what we're talking is a buyer's market here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is a good time to look if you're interested in learning guitar, and everybody should be. It's but isn't that and, that's and like big that, amps, that, big Harry? That's out. like MoFi's and UHQRs and those big uh, records during the pandemic too. People were buying records and record players, and they don't give a shit about vinyl anymore. But they did during the pandemic. So do yeah. you think we're going to see an influx of uh, records coming becoming available to us? But you're not going to get a lot of classic records. You're going to get a lot of Taylor Swift and new stuff. Yeah. And like, I don't think you're going to be getting a lot of OGs floating around. If people just got into vinyl because no, they, they didn't buy those, they bought like yeah. But a lot of those newer limited edition stuff are only going to go up in value at some point. So it's some, a good time to buy. Not. It may know. it may bode well for stuff like the Beatles uh, mono set. Maybe a few of those might start showing up in greater mm -hmm. number. I don't because know. If about people that. are getting out of it, yeah. You know. Would I take? What does it say? Mar a Lago. More logo for your telly? I don't understand that question. That's supposed to be funny. Hey, Bob, this is incredible. I've started to show off, talk about this amazing box set. There are so many great boxes. This is one of the best you're ever going to see. Oh, there it is. All the I've got great. one just like it in my closet. Um, I want to sell mine. Gorgeous. I think I've, I haven't even played the entire box, and I've had it for which eight, box? Years. Now, why did you get involved Queen. in it? If Queen box. Queen's Queen Which is box, Harry? The Queen. Oh, Queen yeah. is I think I've only played man. two records out of it since what I bought it. Hell? You only need I have, two. Queen I have records. the I have the box set, the, the Beatles mono uh, I just bought, but I'm not gonna take it out the show because I don't want to, you know, get dust on it. But okay, yeah, now Beatles what's mono on, box set. I, I got the Beatles You don't want to get dust set. on it? You don't want to get <laughs> dust on it? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm, I'm, only, I'm only kidding. Open your I'm fucking records and play them. 
No, I'm all, no, I'm only, no, I'm only I, kidding about the mono Beatles because there was a big thing about going around with the phony box uh, <laughs> Beatles. Oh, mono. they were phony CDs. That was box. Record Store Day. On Record Store Day, <laughs> that they were going to have it. Oh, right. I, I was kidding. I wish I had one. My <laughs> Queen box set to Uve's daughter. I told her I would leave it to her in my will. Well, that's very kind of you. That's uh, that's a very kind now she of you. every day she asks Uve, is he still alive? Is he still kicking? Is there any sign of it? Dr. Robert, welcome to the show. It's nice to see you. Hey, guys. Got a good group today. Hey, Doc. Dr. Robert, did you ever uh, uh, fall into some of my uh, promotional work on behalf of David Perdoros, your first boy on the moon? His excellent yeah. album, Cyber Girl. Did you ever pick one of these up? I want to uh, tell you to get one. I'll, I, I, and I've been also aware. And they're fantastic. I highly recommend. Okay. Support uh, new, new artists. artists. Yeah. Support right. independent art. I'll look for that. I'll look. And he sends you. And he sends you a note, written hand note to say thank you. Hand written note. note. I think a sticker there. I have there in there. So. You got to put it on your car, Johnny. Johnny, <laughs> Johnny you got to put it on your scooter or whatever you would your transportation. <laughs> yeah. Scooter. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, we got the Queen shirt. We're all in on Queen today, so we're rocking the Queen. I can't show. listen to Queen anymore. It doesn't sit well with me. Oh man, Queen still rocks for me, man. Uh, so many great songs. Uh, my favorite is Killer Queen, the guitar work on that. And they had a unique sound. Like, they didn't sound like every other band. Yeah, but it does, for me, it didn't age well. We, well, didn't mention, we didn't mention their movie yesterday. I don't know. What's Rob's opinion on the Queen movie? I really... I really, I, I seen the documentary about the Queen, about uh, Freddie Mercury. It was a really good document, uh, like a movie kind of thing. Documentary movies. I had trouble watching that. No, the Bohemian Rhapsody, I think, is what yeah, they're talking about, right? The, I, liked, yeah, I liked it. I had a good time with it. So I, 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 I couldn't get past the, the I couldn't get past all the inconsistencies, like the chronological See, I inconsistencies. Take, I, you know. I put that aside. If you want to watch that, go watch a documentary. I think it the spirit well, yeah. it tells you the spirit of the band and the people. I know, I know, but I'm with George. It was like watching yeah. them play bicycle race. In yeah. 1975 costumes, it was yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah so they, did, they did that in the pistol film as well. They had they they had the band playing bodies at the hundred club, yeah. and like you know, and and Dustin Hoffman gone. when Dustin Hoffman is going to UC Berkeley to to find Catherine Ross, he's driving on, on, on the, the Bay Bridge and he's on the Bay top Bridge. of the Bay Bridge going to into San Francisco instead of the East Bay. So fuck you, uh, the graduate. Yeah, one I of don't the know. best I movies still, ever, though. And I bullet bullet that. turns a corner on the Russian top of the Bay Bridge does go into San Francisco, Mazzy. No, no you're on the you're on yeah, it goes into you're San on the Francisco. bottom on the way to Oakland. You're on the top on the way to the city. I know. In the movie, he's on the top going to San Francisco. He's supposed to be going to UC Berkeley. <laughs> oh, right. so he was just oh, they filmed him going and, to San Francisco. Francisco. They, you know. Uh, Unless, uh, and then bullet, bullet, he's on Russian Hill. And he turns a corner, and he's all, all of a sudden over by. Uh, you know, it's not the same thing it, as Freddie Mercury wearing the wrong leotard in 1975. It's almost like <laughs> the, probably the I, case, I wore the wrong leotard in 1975. If you these uh, whack a mole videos, you can see cuts like weird cuts, like he's edited them. Mm -hmm. No, I don't edit, yeah. I never edit a whack a mole video. Yeah, um, physicality, the physicality, yeah, yeah and, and uh, that's a good point. So and Kate Matthew. didn't manipulate her photograph. I mean, he, here's the deal. Who cares almost, if she almost, retouching? Oh, everybody yeah, retouches. Matthew, you, talk, you just talked for 20 minutes. Shut your trap. <laughs> Fuck up, Rob. You moron. Here's, here's the deal. With movies, let's say that leotard, they had to get a sign off from the person who made the leotard, so they had to make other choices. That's what happens in movies. There's a thing called suspension of belief. Well, no, legally yeah. they can't do everything accurately. But that that yeah. movie, the original director was fired with a, more time to shoot the movie. They brought another director. So, and well, you know, in the Elton, in the Elton blame John on movie, Wardrobe? in the Elton John movie, Elton no, John no, didn't no. really float up on the piano. Okay, it's no. fiction. It's a movie. No. It's yeah. 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 So. well, let's talk about Queen as a band, the original Queen with Freddie and everything. One of the things I like about them, they were so versatile. They did various styles of music. And boy, when they decided to rock out, tie your mother down. When those fuckers decided to rock, they rock. They blow the they blow the house stuff up. That the drumming Roger Taylor on Under Pressure with boy, 
when they the part why can't we get along get along get along right after that with the drumming build up it's like right out of the, the who uh my generation is just absolutely amazing and in the yeah. in the in the song sheer heart attack the yeah. greatest drum tom roll of all time where, yeah. it, where it builds and builds and builds and then he does that so don't, don't you think the movie worked to introduce a whole new generation to oh definitely the definitely, oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. 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 That's, and it's entertainment i enjoyed it it made me yeah. want to go back and and watch the live it's a good show movie again. mazzy it's a good movie all i just said was yeah. i was bothered by the inconsistencies as a queen fan yeah. that's all that's all yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Me too. Me too. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. But it was just you know all the stuff about when he discovered he was ill and stuff, and then Live Aid and what have you. And the you know, I'll tell you my, uh, and, you know. my buddy's uh, record company. They have all the Roger Taylor solo stuff that they've reissued. Hey, oh, I have right. director, Wolfie, the first director went through a Me Too period. So that's kind of what happened. Uh, uh, listen, Sarah. All, apparently, oh, all. Hold oh, 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 on. Apparently, all the leotards are on your stream when you do your manosphere <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> those aren't the leotards; those are the reotards. Uh, <laughs> but you know, the, the other thing, the other thing about Queen, if 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 you you know, because Mazzy said you only need a couple Queen records, I, I I don't agree with that because the stuff with Queen for me is the deeper cuts. I don't you know, I don't think about another one bites the dust or We Will Rock You. Every Queen album is is like a journey of every almost style of music you I can agree. think of. Oh, and yeah. and it's it's and that that's what you need to do when you're listening to Queen is just take that journey with them, and 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 it's it, you know it's every record is like that. So and and that is I think uh, the point for Queen. You know, but do you, do you have do you have dropout points? Do you have dropout points? Because mine's the game and and the uh, hot space. I, I could yeah, but hot space gave us well, under pressure, which is Marcus. Wrong. If the Beatle biopic is done well, like I don't like most of them, but I did like the one. What's the one uh, backbeat with Stu backbeat, Sutcliffe? And yeah. there's inaccuracy in that, but I like I yeah. like that movie a lot. Oh, something's just happened. What oh. we're looking, we're just saying. Are you worried? <laughs> your leaders? Are you breathing hard? All these smells, Harry. But I was going to say to David that in America we were almost forcibly dropped after uh, um, Hot Space because right. they never came back again. Right. So, so I saw them on the Hot Space tour, and then they never came back to America again. And it was hard to hear about their records coming out uh, because, you know, at the time it was different than you didn't have the internet going and all that kind of stuff. So you mm. had to kind of roll up on them. Well, and uh, you know, I went back and enjoyed George, all of that but later. George, but George, they there was that period of time they were doing stuff for movies, like yeah. they would either Watch. like Highlander, and then they yep. did so certain songs, but then. Was it in the '90s that Disney bought their whole catalog, right? And then they it was right before have, it was Hollywood Records, yeah, right before uh, Freddie yeah, died. Yeah, Disney. They, yeah, and they did not have any Queen CDs at all up until like '88, '89, and then Hollywood Records kind of they didn't even have a label in America, and yeah. so Hollywood Records kind of picked them up and then re-released all their stuff and and uh, and the final album. DJ, I think you mean Nowhere Boy. Nowhere Boy was a good movie. Inaccuracies there too, but it was well done, and I like Nowhere Boy. But I yeah, I like Queen on there, all that jazz tour. I like George's. Very, very good. It doesn't have to be exactly accurate. If um, for me, that's just for me because I. Hey, will, uh, uh, Dave Bridgerosha, uh, any influence of Queen on your stuff? Do you like them, or they're overblown, or? Is there any yeah. what's your take? Brian, on? Brian May is amazing. Great songs, wonderful yeah. band. And Vanilla Ice said that he owns now owns the rights to Under Pressure, which is weird because he got sued. And then when Bowie and, and Freddie Mercury died, he bought the rights from, from uh, Brian May. And he's making he said he's still making tons of money off, the, sure. off that song. Yeah. And he's remade it. He's remade it in like every possible music style. Uh, you know, like he does like a new metal version of it. He does like a, a new hip hop version of it. He keeps re-recording the the song too. Yeah. It's funny, right? There you yeah. go. Queen, Queen, Queen that's, is amazing. That's not Great a band. very good record. Do you know, um, Rob? As you're holding yeah. that up, did you did, did you know that Justin Hawkins from The Darkness has got those figures that that on that on his knuckles? Ah. Uh. And I always thought that was quite weird because they've got Roger Taylor's son in the band now. Yeah, Roger Taylor's Imagine son. Imagine if your one. singer has got your dad's face on his knuckles. <laughs> my, my, I'm, I'm not going there. but You know, 
if you like j jellyfish, is heavily influenced by Queen too. I think it's important to people lose sight of what the band was like when they first show up on the scene. Killer Queen broke them in uh, in the U.S. Then they come on, and it was like in concert or midnight special, uh, where they came on and they said, "We're going to do Bohemian Rhapsody." Queen have a world debut. You waited till the end of the show, and then they played the thing. It was a big deal. There was a lot of hype about the band. And then uh, a new world record came out. We are the champions on that with the uh, artwork on that album. That made a huge impact on people. Then they changed again. They went with the rockabilly with the you know, crazy little thing called love. That made an impact again. Then Flash, uh, Gordon, the movie came out. And they got, they got the rights to the music on that. That gave them another lift. They were always kind of like a, riding a surfboard, always catching that next wave. They went for a good, good long while. And I would argue when they came out with The Works, 1984, with Radio Gaga and, that, uh, and um, uh, you know, uh, the one with the drag uh, set, which is a great, great tune. Uh, that didn't go over well in America, you know, because the Manosphere were... Uh, poking their heads around going, well, I don't like that. Although Roger Taylor does look very cute as a young schoolgirl. But other than that, it, you know, it smelled the uh, the end of Queen in America for a But while. they weren't, it's, it's funny, they weren't even, like the places they were playing, I saw, the only time I saw them was when uh, Day of the Races came out. Was uh -oh, that 77? Mary, Mary's on fire. Was that 70, 77? Uh, 75, 76. Well, or, I thought 77, 76, I think. So when, and that's a $5,000, uh, 5,000 people haul. And so they yeah, were playing the at Winterland in 77. And they were, you know, huge still. Yeah. And the band changed its image, you know, Freddie with the long hair. And then he got into the, you know, the, the mustache, the close crop hair. But they just kept putting out uh, quality music to the very end. And uh, it's one of the great losses that Freddie Mercury died so He's, damn young. They no, there's rumors, there's rumors that Freddie Mercury was gay. Is that true? No, no, it's George, a no, rumor. That's, not George. At all. That's, that's George. No, yeah, that, <laughs> that's that was, <laughs> you know, was just a Republican plot to try and. Uh, <laughs> now, Brian May out. says that when he joined the band for the, for the longest time, they had no idea he was gay. Well, he had a girlfriend at the time, didn't he, Freddie? Yeah, he did. He had, Mary. Uh, yeah. Oh, this oh, is, um, they should make a biopic about him. I think this Joey one, and I were in the same room a lot. Maybe a first one is. Bohemian Rhapsody oh, Queen on 45. Uh, on, uh, and this is on uh, Electra. Another oh, one bites the dust. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe, it, maybe if Freddie was still alive, he could go on Sarah's uh, stream and be told he's gay. <laughs> would he, he's would he gay. Be a he would gay. Well, he didn't hide it very well, did he? He had the sort of uh, cock duster moustache, I think. He didn't hide it, it as much as Liberace did. That's right. Really I, I guess I shouldn't start rumors <laughs> like that when he's not here to, to defend himself. Well, and also the the, the style change on uh, uh, on Hot Space was just a it was a big curveball. Yeah, it was a lot of dance album, music. It? Yeah, it was a lot yeah. of dance music, and I think the band were at odds with the direction of that record as well. And so it started to cause that kind of friction. And then by the time they sort of got back to doing Queen stuff, like the works and stuff, you yeah, really didn't hear about that, it you, anymore. Do you not was think Roy Freddie, Thomas Freddie Baker going to have a system with Mr. Bad Guy and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, that it, Freddie's solo stuff, right? Was, is that what you were yeah, talking about? He just yeah. went straight high energy kind of, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I read a review that said Freddie wanted everybody to hang out in a gay club with him, but nobody wanted to go. And it was like, it, and and you know, to be honest with you, uh, he was, you know, he he was that he was a guy that spent a lot of time in clubs, and he was a yeah. jet setter dude, and yeah. he he had a lot of culture, you know, from all over the world, and he was trying to bring some of that in, and it just did, you know, I don't think the band wanted to do that. Hi, Gary, welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, I mean, and he was he was hardcore. I mean, Freddie was out of control. He was just having he too much. He around around the San Francisco club. It was, it was the personification of hedonism, basically, with, yeah, uh, totally. with Freddie. Mm -hmm. Have a good time all the time. That's my philosophy, Marty. You know, so that was Freddie. But, uh, and the other guys, you think Brian May, I mean, the guy's an astrophysicist. Yeah, for right. a little bit, but what's, so. wasn't, uh, didn't Freddie's, like, uh, father and all that disown him, like, when he was younger? 
because of this uh, pref sexual preference and because all that because stuff. Because he was or, a musician? Um, because of, I think because of his sexual I wanted preference you to and all that. And all that right. My son, the dentist. That, yeah. And I think the father really, really... Um, Really Sounds like a familiar like story. That's a too familiar story, uh, Johnny. Well, Brian May said that it took him until he flew his parents over for their third night at Madison Square Gardens for his dad to go, mm. all right, you can do this. Yeah, yeah, because the, <laughs> the, the success at that level was undeniable, right? Because he's, yeah, like, he's, he's an astrophysicist, isn't he, or something? He's a... Brian May. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He could he could be a professor of you know the stars or whatever. That's the great thing. I, yeah, I've watched a video about him and his father making that guitar. That the red special, yeah. It's oh my god, what a did you that's know, a great story. You know, did you know yeah. that Rick Mail from the Young One? You know, Rick Mail. Yeah, the legend. He, he, he accidentally sat on it. The red Ooh. special. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because when yeah. he was in that. He was in that bad news band and they did a, a silly cover of Bohemian Rhapsody with Brian May producing and they were at Brian May's house and uh, Rick had gone out for a bit. Adrian Edmondson had, had been having a little go on the red special. And he put it down on the sofa and Rick Mayle came in and just sat oh. on it. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, but luckily he sprung to his feet quick enough. You know, yeah, I think he's, he is Dr. Brian May at this point and I believe he discovered like a solar system or oh, a yeah, star yeah. or something yeah. that that wow. like literally is doing like literal work like that so yes he is. They, they were they were all like that i think too i think uh, john deacon was like an electronics engineer they and were I think roger at, taylor uh, was going to be a dentist or something like that yeah well know. they were all at university when they when yeah. they met so uh, it's a fantastic guys. story they're great band. i personally don't find the music dated you get a song like i want it all just an alley creeper uh, I mean, the way that Freddie sings that, it rocks out. I still love that song. You want to rip the paint off the walls, play that loud. It'll it'll do you some good. Uh, so, uh, Queen, I love them. And this is a great, and uh, really, uh, when it came out, an affordable way of getting the entire discography. Uh, you don't have to worry about scratches or well-played party that. records. Or all half-speed uh, masters, all colored vinyl. Beautiful, beautiful. I don't think mm. they're half speed. I think they're just. I think they uh, are. Are they? Yeah. They could be. Anyway, I'm very happy with it. And, uh, it, you know, if you can find one uh, for a decent price, I encourage you to pick it up. And a big shout out to Queen. They are a top 10 band for me. Go ahead, David. Uh, I have a question for David Donnelly. What, I'm sorry if I missed it. What, what's the connection to Woody Woodmansey? Um, I was in a band called Holy Holy. Um, uh, da, 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 which was um, basically we did th there was a tour of the whole of the man who sold the world and it was uh, Glenn Gregory from um, there's Woody um, Glenn, right. Gregory, Glenn Gregory from Heaven 17 on vocals and stuff Tony Visconti was uh, was on bass but I was on bass first um, and then Tony decided he wanted to join in and, and I you know what are you going to do no no I think the audience wants right. to see me um, so I went from bass, <laughs> so I went from bass to rhythm guitar and um and just sort of rocked out um with James Stevenson, who's uh, from Gene Loves Jezebel, Chelsea, Generation X. Um who else did we have Ooh. going through? Because it changed lineups a few times, you know, but it was myself, Woody, and James Stevenson are probably the ones that attended every single gig in some sort of capacity. Yeah. You know, did you uh, know? Did you know Woody before you got this gig? Is that how no. you got the job? No, 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 no. I was doing oh. some work for a guy called um, Tom uh, Wilco because I was in Glenn Matlock's band as well from the Pistols, and so oh, I was doing okay. some stuff with um, Tom Wilcox, who who is a sort of promoter and what have you. And we did a festival called Latitude Festival in England, um, oh, and it was just because it was the anniversary of the. So you're like Stardust. Jason. The Stardust movie, the, the Ziggy Stardust movie. So, what? Sorry. So, what they did was they played the film. They played the film um, during the afternoon, and then they did a Q and A with Woody because he because he was there. Now, the first line of Holy Holy, first lineup, um, Woody wasn't even our drummer. It was just called Holy Holy, and it was Clem Burke from Blondie was the drummer. Wow. Um, but, cool. But um, but Woody came along to do this Q and A, and of course we got him up for five years, and I think Suffragette City or something like that. Um, but 
yeah afterwards it was like he was talking to tom at the back and 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 uh tom said would you know be up would you be up for doing this again he said yeah but i don't really like clem being on drums i'd like to do it mm-hmm. and and tom said well i didn't i, I wasn't going to ask you you know i didn't i thought it'd be cheeky good no i'd love to do it so that's when holy holy became woody woodman's yeah. holy holy and then eventually Jeez. it became woody woodman's and tony visconti present holy holy okay all right interesting mm-hmm. Thank and then we yeah. had Mag- Maggie Ronson was on back in vocals. Lisa <laughs> Lisa Ronson was on back in vocals. Um, so that's the Ronson family, and also Hannah Berridge, who is actually Mick Ronson's niece, um, and she was in it as well. Oh, we had Tony Visconti's daughter, Jessica, Jessica Lee Morgan. Wow, um, cool. she was on. She was on acoustic guitar. I mean, it was just brilliant. It Have you ever awesome. seen that YouTube animation with, with its animation of David Bowie and Eno? Yeah, and they're, yeah. Work, they're working on the production, and Visconti is treated like, a, like I was. I was actually on a train between gigs when someone showed Tony that. You got to watch that video. Google it. It's an animation, and it's really like riffing on Tony. Because there's always like, that thing, isn't it? it? Can someone share you know? that link. Pardon me. Yeah, right. Can but someone Brian, share the link? I'll find it. I'll find it. Okay. Yeah, that's really funny. But yeah. Uh, so David, touring in, out, and around uh, the UK, and uh, so how did you get your start? When did you uh, start playing guitar? How old were you? Are you talking to me or David? Oh, David? sorry, I got two David. I'll talk to you, to you, David Donnelly, just so we don't get you up a whole either one of you up a whole lot. Can, we, can we refer to him as the Donster? So that <laughs> the means- Donster, yeah, yeah. Donster. A, lot people, a lot of people call me DD. That's fine. Yeah, okay, DD. So uh, yeah, Daredevil, DD superhero man anyway yeah. so cool. how when did you start playing guitar or you know well i was drummer, you, uh, I was a drummer first i, I was drummer were. first uh, my, my dad uh, my dad introduced me to his old raf kit, kit, drum kit when i was about five and um i grew up uh, amongst jazzers basically because my dad was a jazz musician and so we were all i mean they're british people so i don't know whether they sort of translate to you guys with in the jazz bums and stuff but we i used to spend a lot of time around clear lane and johnny dankworth's house and stuff like that and uh the kenny claire the drummer and stuff and so it was all this jazz stuff but i wasn't really wasn't really into it and then and then sweet happened and slade happened Sweet. And I remember being yeah, being really impressed with Clear Lane, even though she was a much bigger artist, but she was on RCA, the same label as Sweet, mm-hmm. and that I found exciting. Yeah, Sweet um, were uh, absolutely <laughs> huge. And Slade, top-selling so- English band in the 70s over in the UK. A lot of people would think, oh, there's so many bands called T-Rex, all these different bands doing stuff, but it's Slade that ended up having the most hits. Mm. Uh, there are great interviews with Ken Scott. And Ken Scott, Joy knows, uh, Joy Callio knows Ken Scott. It's just crazy. The people uh, people like yourself, David and uh, George and uh, Joey that have connections with all these named people, Angela Kelly, of course, and we would be remiss if we didn't mention our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Matthew, <laughs> muted. Muted, muted Mazzy. Imagine me, me and the boy are going to head out now. Uh, right. I have to go, but I'm going to listen for the last few minutes. Uh, yeah, nice to see you all. And uh, buy those records. Go buy sure. David's record. Go and you know do all the yeah, stuff. Please support. Please Thanks, support. Norman. And, and buy the Venus reaction because Loki did. Loki bought my single. Cheers, Loki. I have. I bought your single too. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Yeah. Before right, Matt, here. So before you take off, Maz, I, uh, I did want to tell you, and I, I think you'll enjoy this. I have a. A couple of uh, moles popped up on my uh, lawn, and I bought a trap yesterday and set it. And I'm hoping that I've speared a mole out there. So if I if I do, I'll uh, I'll post it on Instagram. Whack it! Uh, oh, you're gonna uh, bomb it. Yeah. Yeah. Now I bought some mole traps myself. Are they the yeah. scissor type? You These press are the down spikes. Spikes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, right to you're in Oregon. Right you're in Oregon. Right right you're in Oregon. Can you, can you pull out your shotgun and put it? Oh, yeah. you know, I, I pray this is a regular segment. Old guys talking about killing moles. It's just horrible. <laughs> yeah, absolutely horrible. Can we get a medical minute? <laughs> well, we'll Lance a boil here. Uh, Dr. Oh, Ruffer, yeah. welcome to the show. It's good to see you. Uh, I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying the conversation. And there was, I, you know, it was very entertaining and interesting. And I, you yeah. know, it was stuff I knew a lot less than you guys know about it. 
Yeah, we're very fortunate to get some uh, some uh, very knowledgeable people on the program mm -hmm. that uh, know a thing or two about rock and roll and have lived the life and survived to tell the tale. Mm -hmm. I ran around like the A and B bar circuit working a sound bar in the uh, soundboard in the '80s. So I mean, it's crazy, uh, you know. How many times do we got to tell you first the band name, then the you know put the uh, the strippers after, put the band up, then strippers, you know. It's like the two exotic dancers in the music of Tokyo. Well, we want, you know, put Tokyo up first and the, the strippers, but uh, it's the way it goes. Um, George Borden, so great to have you on Logo board dancers. today as well. Uh, George can be seen every Sunday uh, starting around, I'm going to say 6 Pacific time. George starts to show up, and uh, he's a good guy. He's a good friend of ours here on the channel. I encourage mm -hmm. everybody to support him, yep. watch his program. And uh, and David Pedrosia, congratulations again on the album. I'm a big fan of yours. Love your music. David Donnelly, I got to get some of your uh, physical uh, uh, material in my hands, albums or whatever the hell you've been playing on. It would be great because we know you. You're also a very good friend to this channel. So Just, uh, Thanks, Johnny. Very quickly, very quickly Rachel. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a really nice surprise last week. I got sent this, Dance Naked, Point yeah. of Change. And this was something that I did a session on in the very late 80s. Yes. And uh, it's just been reissued as a, it's got the CD with it and all this sort mm. of stuff. And uh, and it's on rather groovy white vinyl. But it's lovely because I've only ever had a cassette of it. <laughs> and uh, it's got reissued and they sent me a CD and a, and a vinyl. And yeah. That's really nice. Really nice. What's it called again? It's, it's called it's by the band Dance Naked. Yeah. And it's called Point of Change. It's a bit gothy, as you can see. Yeah. I love I love goth. If if, if you like Bauhaus y type sort of, you know Susie and the Banshees. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done a lot of stuff involving the cure and what have yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you, know, Robert, saying, you, you were yeah. saying, Rachel, where did I come from? My first thing was basically meeting lol tolhurst when i was about 14 from the cure and we became friends and then i ended up going down to london and i stood in for whoever was missing in rehearsals <laughs> and so i ended up playing bass drums and whatever whoever was missing you know um because it was a bit of a cool. fractious, fractious time for the band and um and so once i'd done that i kind of got a bit of a rep reputation for someone that played multiple instruments so if they needed a drummer or a bass player or a guitarist it it started i sort of you know i mean i didn't go didn't go professional for quite quite a few years but it was kind of i suddenly realized if i just advertised everything i do mm -hmm. then if someone doesn't need a drummer they might need a guitarist for a tour and they and i became that sort of sideman thing um but also you know producer as well of uh, of other bands and other artists and stuff as as i got older and older and older you know yeah and older, and older. very cool living the life david that's uh, the rock and roll lifestyle man i i'm very very happy and uh, and in terms of just it you know it's not an arrogance i swear it's just i can't believe the stuff that's happened to me um because there were a lot of sliding mo sliding door moments and and uh well but there, there were sliding dormants i did i didn't join the stereophonics and i really wanted to i didn't actually join the cure because they were abroad after i'd been yeah. filling in they went abroad and they had to get some really quick and you know time was, and chance time yeah and it was yeah so i missed a few i missed a few but uh i mean the it's fact that always, go ahead Chani. it's not always uh glamour like a lot of young young people think it is it's a lot of oh, work God, and no. hard work and dedication yeah. and everything else. Yeah, I got ditched by lots a girlfriend ups, just before. Lots of ups I got and downs. Ditched, you know? I got ditched not by a girlfriend. Not all sex, drugs, and rock and roll? Yeah, well, there was a bit of that. Yeah. There is. A, there is <laughs> but, but I did. I got, you know, I got ditched by a girlfriend just before yeah. going on a six-week European tour. And the first yeah. date on that tour was February the 14th, which is a kick in the bollocks. And mm -hmm. also, February the 14th was her bloody birthday as oh, well so and i'm all these miles away and i like you know it's that's not nice my dad got ill when i was on tour in sweden and glenn said mm -hmm. do you want to fly home and i went no because my dad's a musician he'd, he'd hate it if i turned up at his you know all that you know so mm -hmm. you know it's uh 
it, it, it can be the show must go it on can be run. <laughs> it's well, thousands well, and thousands of hours in preparation and the audience gets an hour maybe two hours yeah. uh, mm-hmm. and and it you know it looks like it's just people having fun but it's it's a lot of work goes yeah behind one of those i mean equally goes. equally i could i'm not going to but i could tell you about a night in brazil after a gig where it was me and three girls in a hotel room Oh, that oh, is, really? when's, when's that going to happen working in McDonald's? <laughs> All we need now is Joey Callio up here. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, the, the best I can boast, David, is two. I could only do yeah. for myself, but I was only working the soundboard. So if you understand, it was late. Yeah. I was a little tired uh, yeah. after a big gig. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great show. Uh, I want to thank all the support that we got. Uh, both from the peanut gallery and the good folks on uh, stage. Johnny, DJ Johnny L, I love it. Harry's Music Room, David Donnelly. David, thanks for sharing some of your story. My good friend, Rob the Wax. George Borden, legend, and uh, a great producer, very knowledgeable. If you want to know about gear, hardware, and more, check out the George Borden Show. Dr. Robert, if you got some spinal issues, make sure you go see Dr. Robert. He's retired. He'll well, give you or, a Dr. Dr. Robert's got you back. Or a mole fest infestation. If you have a mole, <laughs> mole infestation, go see Dr. Rabbit. Pick up the album. And, yes, and make sure you check out First Boy on the Moon, uh, the personification David. of that being David Pedrosia, Johnny with the album in hand. The new single just dropped today. Uh, David, great to uh, to have you with us today. And uh, always a pleasure. Don't be a stranger. Thanks for having me. I totally appreciate you, Rachel. All right. It's good to meet you, D, the other D. D. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you, David Donnelly. Yeah, we put them up together. All right, everybody. That's going to do it for us today. Please get the thumbs up on the show. It does help us out. We'll be back tomorrow with another three-hour show. Uh, happy Good Friday to the people, to for the believers. Instead of uh, Jesus died for our sins, thank God for that. All right. Take care, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye for now. Bye, everybody. Goodbye.